Right, the meeting's now live. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to the meeting of the Sales Planning Committee. I am David Evans, uh, Councillor, Chair of this committee. I'm obliged to inform you that this meeting is being live streamed so members of the public will be able to hear the audio of the meeting and view the papers shown on the screen. <clears throat> Should the committee members experience any technical difficulties during the meeting, please contact the designated IT officer on the number they already supplied you. Everyone is requested to mute their microphones unless asked to speak. Please only use the chat function to indicate the desire to speak, but nothing else, so that it's clear who is asked to speak and the debate has to be heard to those listening through the audio feed. <clears throat> Members are asked to ensure that they present throughout the meeting as you cannot vote on an item of you have not heard all the debate. As chair, I will interpret the council's existing standing orders in the light of requirements of remote participation with advice from the monitoring officer. Prior to making ruling, at the start of the meeting, I will ask members of the committee to confirm their presence and to disclose any pecuniary interest. I will ask everyone that speaks during the meeting, including members of the committee and officers to, to introduce themselves each time before they speak. This is so those listening know who is speaking. Roll call of disclosure of pecuniary interest. Chair, members are reminded to disclose any pecuniary interest in the matter to be discussed, which is not included in the register of interest, and leave the meeting by turning off the camera and muting the microphone prior to the matter being discussed. Chair, to read the members' names and ask them to confirm their presence and confirm their interest. David Evans, Chair, I have no interest. David Turner. Thank you, Chair David Turner. I have no interest. Thank you. Andy Boddington. Simon Harris. Simon Harris, Brosley Ward, no interests. Thank you. Nick Hignett. Uh, Nick Hignett, Lay Valley Ward, no interests. Thank you. Richard Huffer. Richard Huffer, Clay Division, no interest. Cecilia Motley. Uh, this is Cecilia Motley, Corvedale Division. Um, yes, I do have an interest, a personal interest rather than anything else. As I declared last time we discussed the Linney um, applications, this uh, item number five, um, I will declare a personal interest in this and will not take part in the debate or in any voting procedure. Also just a standing uh, declaration that I am the vice chair of the AONB and sit on its management and partnership boards. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Celia. Tony Parsons. Uh, Councillor Tony Parsons for uh, Basin Hill, Column and Sutton, and I have uh, no pecuniary interests. Thank you. Mad Shinton. Matt Shanton, Clibbury Mortimer Division, I have no interests. Robert Tindall. I represent Brown Key Division, I have no interest, but I'm also a member of the AONB. Thank you, Robert. Tina Woodward. Councillor Tina Woodward, Alvin Claver Division, I have no pecuniary interests, but I have an interest in item 18. I'm the local member, so I will speak and then mute and leave the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Please can the officers now confirm their presence. Planning officers. Planning officers, please. Richard Fortune, Principal Planner. Tim Rogers, Area Planning Manager. Thank you. Uh, and Andrew Shurikovsky, Consultant Planner. Thank you. Solicitor, please. Kim Brown, Solicitor. OK. Planning officers, any other officers, please? Ward committee officer. Thank you. I should now turn to the item that's on the agenda. Apologies for absence, please. We've Have received we... no apologies, Chair. Thank you. To confirm the minutes of the last South Planning Committee meeting held on the 22nd of September, I move the minutes as a previous Planning Committee meeting held on the 22nd as circulated within the agenda. 
Pre-sign. Can I have a second to put for the minute? Yes, please? I second. Okay. Thank you. I now accept these minutes as a true record unless anyone indicates differently. Public questions, please. No public questions, Chair. Thank you. We've done disclosure of pecuniary interest. Now we turn to substantive items. I will invite the planning officer to present them before dealing with public speaking part of the meeting and ask the comments from the members of the committee. Item five, proposed residential land adjacent to Linney House, Linney Ludlow. Uh, thank you, Chair. Andrew Sharkovsky, consultant planner. Um, Chair, you, for those members who, and I think it's probably mo most of the committee that are here today, um, this is a further application for the land adjacent to Linney House in Ludlow. The committee will recall that we had a previous application for eight dwellings at the July uh, planning committee where it was a report on an appeal um, in relation to that application. I should, I should just say that that appeal remains undetermined and as yet we've not had a, had a decision on that application. This, this application arises out of um, the fairly prolonged discussion negotiation that there, there was with the applicant on the back of the, the that eight house scheme um, and, it, and it is essentially put forward as a, an alternative scheme to address the shortcomings that were um, reported to the planning committee on the, um, in, on the July meeting um, and what you've now got as a result of that further discussion and negotiation with the applicant is a reduced four house scheme rather than the original eight houses. The, the scheme in many ways is substantially similar to the original eight house scheme except that it is now for four houses rather than for eight. Um, you'll see there's a, f a fairly lengthy report. I apologise for the length of the report but <laughs> As, you, as you'll be aware from the discussion in, at the July committee, the, the issues raised by this application, um, which to some degree follow from the rather prolonged history that there's been with it, uh, are, are somewhat complicated. What I'll do, Chair, is I'll just run through the slides um, and I'll keep my verbal report fairly brief because the written report is fairly comprehensive. Um, there's one additional late representation, um, which, has, which I think has been circulated for members as well, um, which is from the agent for the applicant. Uh, which I believe, I believe members have actually had circulated to them. Um, running, running through the slides, uh, you, and I forgive me if you, you, some of these are a repeat of the, the slides you saw in July, but it's, they're really just for an, a reminder. The first slide here shows the location. The location is at the, at the Linney, at the, at the northern end of Ludlow. Um, just in case you're not aware of it, as you come in on, on into Ludlow from the road on the north and, and you come past the petrol filling station and over the bridge and then you come into the main part of the town and you have the turning that's right on the corner to the right and that, that's the Linney which uh, f runs um, down the the, the side of the site past the Linney House and then there's a sharp left hand bend at the end and the road runs up to um, where the rugby club is and towards the castle. So it's that orange area that's marked on the map in front of you there. If we can have the next slide, please, Chair. Um, this is the application site. It's substantially the same as it was for the for the eight house scheme. It's slightly different insofar as if you can see where the cursor is, uh, there's there's an area that's sort of cut out um, in blue, which is why the cursor was just as I was speaking there. Um, yes, there, which was occluded in the original uh, eight house scheme, has now been taken out of the uh, the four house scheme, and the the boundary to the north of that is is very slightly different around the rear of Linney House. But otherwise, the application site is broad, broadly similar. Um, if we can move on to the next slide. This, this is the layout plan for the site and when we come on to the next slide and I'll maybe just ask Tim to toggle between the two. This, this is the four house scheme as it's now presented. Tim, if I can ask you just move on to the next slide and then we'll toggle back again. So if I, that, that, that's the layout for the eight house scheme that, were, that uh, were the committee considered back in July. So you can see in essence what there is on there is um, two, two rows pretty well of four houses, oh sorry of eight houses um, that, that sort of sat side by side and you've got these uh, four houses, it appears there's those three, but there's actually a fourth one there, which sits um, just to the north of all the boundary wall that runs along the Linney. If we now toggle back to the previous slide, we can go back to that. That one there, you'll you'll see how how the layout is rather different in that those four houses those four um, houses that are located to the north of the wall have, have essentially been omitted. Um, there's, there's some amendment to the layout of the remaining four houses. 
the the actual house designs is, is somewhat different these are um, for slightly larger houses they're four to five bedroom houses and if we move forward um, back to the eight house slide and then on um, we'll come through to the detailed designs so what you've got here is, is one single design that's replicated four times on the site um, the idea is very much as it was with the eight house scheme to have this um, sort of scan what, what the application refers to as sort of a Scandinavian woodland type development. Um, the intention is to um, introduce a design that, that is modern, uh, contemporary. Um, the each of the houses is essentially made up with of four sections which have uh, mainly asymmetrical roofs as you can see on there there's uh, a fairly substantial um, glazed uh, window you can, which you can see in the top left hand corner there which is the same on all th on all four of the houses which produces a very large um, vertical wall on, on one elevation um, but in essence, you've got four, four, a, a single design that is repeated four times. So it's it's slightly different from the eight house scheme where there was a bit more variation in the design between the houses. If we can move on to the next uh, slide, please. And then each house um, has with it a garage. Um, this slide and the next just just show the garage designs. Um, some of them are flat roof. The, the the garage on the on the left is a uh, which I think is plot one is is an asymmetrical roof design. The the garage on the right is actually a double garage which works both ways as you can see there, um, which is flat roofed and then the idea is it has a green roof. And then if we move on to the next slide as well, it just shows the fourth garage which is on plot four, which again is is a, is a flat roof but green green roof design. And then if we can move on to the next slide, please. Where the, uh, apart from the reduction in the number of, of, of houses that's proposed here, the, re the reason for the, the reduction in number was that the, pr the, 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 the primary issue we had, and this came out particularly in the responses from the council's tree officer, the, the ecology officer and the conservation officer on the original eight house scheme, was that by, by um, to, in order to construct the development, essentially you've got to uh, uh, reprofile the site, uh, the upper part of the site adjacent to the linny. Um, which would have involved taking out um, almost all the trees on the upper part of the site. the site. The site is split in two, it's on two levels essentially. You've got a higher level adjacent to the linear and then a lower level um, alongside the river and, the, and on the site at the moment there's a fairly steep bank um, which runs from more or less the the, the left hand end um, near to, just to the south of plot one there up to plot four and that would have to be completely reprofiled to say to redo to, to, to achieve the reprofiling you've got to take the trees out and that, that's essentially the substantive issue on the site. Um, in, in order to come up with a scheme that was acceptable in terms of retaining the woodland and the character of the site and the biodiversity, um, the comments on the original eight house scheme as reported to July committee were that if you put eight houses back into the, into the site, you couldn't essentially achieve a, a level of restoration um, and, and biodiversity um, mitigation and enhancement. And also it would have had a fairly serious impact on the, on the character of the conservation area. So what, what, the, what the applicant has attempted to do here is to come back and, and produce a reduced scheme. And what's particularly different here that you'll see compared with the eight house layout is that you've got a much, much broader belt of essentially replanting woodland to the immediate north of the linny between the houses and the road which you wouldn't have been able to achieve with with the eight house scheme because that area would have been taken up with houses there's also enhanced planting to, to the north um, along, along the river as well so the the, the landscaping the replanting um, uh, element of the scheme here is much enhanced compared with the original eight house scheme and that, that's why the, the, the recommendation this time around is that the applicant has come forward with something which the advice from the tree officer, the ecology officer and from conservation it, it, is, is a scheme that now can potentially work. So it's a, it's a combination here of a reduced number of houses but a greatly enhanced landscaping scheme. There's what's also been put forward is a long-term management plan for the woodland on the site and that's a very key part of the proposal here because it's an, essentially the site is going to be substantially cleared at least or at least the upper part of the site and to make it acceptable in terms of re-establishing the woodland on the site you're talking about something which clearly isn't going to happen over, overnight so 
um, the idea of the submission of the management plan is, is it, it's to not only secure that replanting and that um, uh, of, of the site, but it's actually to, it's to secure the long term management of the site to ensure that there's something um, back on the site again in 10, 15, 20 years time, which not only provides something that, that's as good at, but hopefully better than what's there at the moment. So the land, the landscape, as I say, the landscaping and the management is a really key part of the application in this case, and the, and the applicant's been, been happy to come forward with that. If we can move on to the next um, slide, please. I think the next one is just a, an enhanced version of the landscaping plan. Yeah, so that's just that's just the landscaping plan in a bit more detail, and you can see the four plots there. Um, that that really just sort of breaks down the landscaping in, into a number of different elements. Um, the, the tree officer, as you'll see in the, in the in the commentary in the report, has come back and expressed um, some 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 reservations just about details, but they are details of the landscaping scheme. Um, but it's suggested that those can be relatively easily amended. So you'll see the recommendation is, is for approval in this case, sub subject to some some amendment to that to, to that landscaping scheme. But they're not they're not major issues. There there the, the there was a, a comment um, or one one of the suggestions was that there should be a five metre buffer alongside the river which has come out of the comments from the environment agency which is the the applicant is interpreted in as meaning as there should be a cordon sanitaire for sort of for five meters around the river the tree officer has asked that 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 area be retained and, and included in the replanting um, and that that's one of the points that say I've, report, I've, I've set out in the report which where there's a little bit of amendment required but it but in essence the the the, the proposal is to to run with that landscaping scheme with some minor amendments if we can move on to the next slide, please. Um, that, that, that I've just included this slide because what that shows is actually the contours on the site. So you'll see where the four houses are um, and you'll see the, I hope you can see it on the screen, the sort of green lines, which are the contours. So essentially you've got a, a, a I won't say it's a flat area because it's actually a series of steps of the four houses on, but the reprofiling of the site will, re will create that bank um, so that it's, you'll, see, you'll appreciate from that drawing that there's a difference in levels between where the houses are on the plot and the lower level along the river. But essentially, it's it's going to shift where 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 the where the, the 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 drop in the levels of the site will be. So, if we move on to the subsequent drawings, I think there's some there's some sections which just give you an idea. I don't know if you can see this very well on the screen, but you can, if you look at this, these are sections through the site, and the green line. Is is the existing contour? Is the it's the existing is, yeah, it's, it's the existing contour? So it show, what that that drawing is showing you is where there's going to be an element of cut and fill on the site. So you're you're essentially going to get material taken off the 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 it's the most southerly bit of the site adjacent to the boundary with the linear, and that's going to be pushed back towards the river to create the platform on which to build. And that, that's essentially what those those contours are showing. But you'll see from that it does it does affect a fairly extensive area of the site, which is the reason for needing the tree felling. If we can move on to the next slide, please. Um, that's just the repeat. I, I just put that in because it shows where the sections are through the site. And if we move on to the following drawings, if you just note where those red lines are. These are this is just a sample. We can just um, flick through these. These are just a, a sample of, of, of sectional drawings through the site, which give you an idea of, of how it should work. So there's three or four of those drawings. And if we move on to the next slide, please. Um, this um, you'll, you'll recall when we when when I. I introduced the, the scheme back at the July committee that one of the key issues on this site is the fact that there is an existing consented three house scheme which was originally approved in 2014 and then the consent was renewed in 2017 and this this is the approved plan um, the, the applicant has come forward with with this um, new application and indeed the eight house scheme it is essentially to try and come up with a scheme that that's something that's better essentially than, what, than what's here. The original three house scheme really to a much greater degree retained the contours on the site so you can see the bank um, between the two levels is that is that sort of brown area in the middle that sits between the two houses on the left and the third and the third house on the right so that that there wasn't the level of recontouring involved in that that original approved scheme um, 
and as a result it, it wasn't necessary to take out anything like the number of trees under under the original approved scheme that scheme is still a valid planning permission and in theory it's still open to the developer to to implement that scheme should should they wish and if and if you're minded to approve this application today effectively it would put two different schemes on the table and it's open to to the applicant to decide which to implement if the eight house scheme is allowed on appeal then it's there's potentially three different schemes on the table and the developer could choose which which of those to to implement um but really the key thing with that scheme was it didn't involve anything like the level of um removal of trees from the site and that's where that original scheme substantially differs from the existing scheme in terms of the works to the site if we move on to the next and the next two or three slides these are the i think there's the, the elevations for the this is the original scheme and this was just to show you the designs of the original houses they're a bit of a mixed bunch um, of, of designs there was a there was a not quite such a consistent theme to the, to the design uh, and the applicant I think was quite strongly the view that it was possible to come up with something that was uh, a better and more interesting in design and something that could um, hopefully provide a, a, a sort of greater degree of imp improvement and that's really been the objective of of, of, of the, the, the eight house scheme and now the four house scheme and as you'll see in the report here that I've, I've written that um, the issue, the application re here really turns on whether or what not what what is now proposed as a four house scheme provides sufficient betterment and enhancement over the existing three house scheme to warrant approval of the application. If we just move on to the next slide, which you just saw there briefly, um, this is the tree survey plan for the site. I think I showed this at the last committee or an equivalent version of this drawing. Um, the, the trees marked in pink there are the one are the trees that are, are marked for felling. So it gives you an idea of, of how extensive the tree felling required in order for the reprofiling works is. And, you're, and you're, you, you can understand why there's been a degree of controversy about this application because it, it is a, a, a fairly high proportion of the trees on the site. Um, although as I've set out in the report, that the quality of the individual trees on the, on the site um, many, many of them are not, you know, are, are not in themselves particularly notable as individual trees. The value of the site is in the block of woodland, but nevertheless, because of the extent of the reprofiling works, the number of trees that need to be felled is quite great. And if we can move on to the next slide, please. Um, again, I, sh I showed these, these same photographs to you in the July committee and it's just to give you an idea as to how the tree cover on the site is, has changed. So you'll see on the left hand side there, there's a, an aerial photograph from 1999 which shows fairly substantial tree cover, but there's clearly um, what your best you could describe as rides through, through the site. Um, then moving through to 2015, you can see how the trees have matured and the extent of the tree cover um, has in, in increased. Um, as I've set out in the report, the, the, the history of um, the activities related to the, tree on the trees on the site is fairly extensive and there was a period of, of felling undertaken in 2015 so that um, by the time you get to 2019, which is the photograph on the right, you can see that there's been some reduction in the number of trees on the site. Um, I, I, I won't go through the detail of it all because it's set out in the report. Um, so you can just see over, you know, over a period of 20 years how the level of tree cover has actually changed on the site. If we can move on to the next slide, please. <clears throat> I think we're on to the photographs yet. So just to finish the, the slides, there's there's just a series of photographs here. Again, you'll, you'll have seen these at the July planning committee. The, the site is actually in that area of woodland. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's sort of more or less there in the middle of the photograph. And it's 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 just slightly yes it's just slightly above where the cursor is is where and really that photograph is there is just to give you a semblance of what you know an idea of what what the the the, the nature of the site is in the context of the hold of Ludlow so it is a block of woodland that sits within the town and if we can have the next slide please um, and there's just a series of views around the site. So this, this is the, the um, view from the western end of the site at the, at the corner of the Linney. Um, there's an existing gate there that will be blocked up and then there'll be a new access created ju just on the right, very right, right hand edge of the photograph. Um, so there are two new accesses to be created into the site. And if we can move on, please. 
that's the view from the other end of the linear. The linear, if you're not familiar with it, it's a very narrow road. Um, it's only possible for one one car at a time to go up and down um, um, Linny Lane. There is a pavement down the, the left hand side as you're going down. It doesn't have a proper curb. It, there is a curbstone there, but essentially it's flat. So um, it's not possible for two cars to pass except at the point where you get to the bend in the road, which is more or less um, I'm trying to see where it is on there. It's not very clear on there, but there is roughly where the cursor is. Um, so part of the, the proposal here, as it was with the eight house scheme, is to um, rebuild the wall on the right hand side, which is underneath most of the ivy that you can see there, but to provide an additional part or provide a passing space halfway along the linear. There is a, there's, there's much, of a blind, much more of a blind spot than that photograph shows. Um, and it, it's, it's, a, it's an unfortunate point. Um, it is the only point along the linear where cars can pass. And at the moment, what tends to happen if two, if two cars meet is that the car going down the linear has to pull up onto the pavement in order to allow the car coming up to pass. So one of the one of the elements of the betterment that's been offered by the applicant in this case is because the wall itself is in very poor condition. They're going to have to do substantial works to repair um, the wall is that they're going to take out a section of the wall on the bend and provide a passing place. So there's betterment there in terms of actually secu securing the future and the restoration of the wall as, 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 as quite an important element in the conservation area. And it is in very poor condition. Um, and it does bulge out because the, the soils um, on the main part of the site have actually been banked up against the wall, pushing the wall out. So if, if nothing happens on the site sooner or later, there's got to be work done to the wall. So as part of the scheme, it, the, the intention is to um, restore the wall, retain it as much as possible. And you'll see there are conditions recommended in the, in the permission relating to um, agreeing a schedule of works and how that work will be undertaken to, to restore the wall. But as I say, as part of it, there will be a section of the centre of the wall will be taken out and there, there will be a, a widening of the, the linear lane to provide a, a more formalised passing place to improve access along the linear. Um, that photograph also gives you an idea of just what the, what, you know, what the sense of woodland is as you go down the lane, but you'll see how narrow it is. This is further up. This is where the, 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 the entrance to the in, into the site is at the, the top end of the site behind the house. This access that you can see here on the right hand side will be retained. Um, again, you can see the wall there um, that runs all the way down the linear uh, and you can see the, the, the trees that there are in, in, in well, behind that within the site. And we can move on again, please. <laughs> This is an air. This is a, a shot from the north. Um, again, it's just to give you an overall idea of, of 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 what the site is like as you view it from outside and and how it does present a block of woodland. And the next slide, please. This is this is further around to the north again. There's, there's, there's just two shots here because they're taken at two different times of the year. So you'll see the, the the shot at the top is the summertime shot, and the shot at the bottom is is the is the winter winter time shot. And you can see the castle there on the right hand side. But again, it's just to give you that that sense of what the site is like. And the next slide, please. I think we're almost there. Yeah, I think this is the last slide. Uh, and that that that's a um, the view from the castle looking looking down on the site again. It's really just to give the sense of woodland that there is within the, within the site that the, the, the sense of woodland that the preside, the site presents within the boundary of Ludlow. Um, I think that's the last slide. Um, really, just a, I, I'll keep my my further comments fairly short, Chairman. As you'll see in the report. There, the, the the key issues around this site is it sits just as I've set out in the report is it it sits just outside the development boundary for Ludlow, so in, it, it, as far as planning policy is concerned, it actually falls in the, within the, the area defined as open countryside. Um, the, the, the issue then is, is in so far as it does as to whether or not there's a case under SAMDEV policy MD3 for invoking MD3, which does allow for um, housing development outside the boundary. But, but normally only in circumstances where the, ha the housing guidelines set out in the da SAM, in the SAMDEV is such that we, you know, we're in a position where there's, there's potentially shortage of provision. Um, I've set out the figures in Ludlow, and in Ludlow is one of those places where, in fact, we've got very substantial over provision. So in terms of the principle of the development here, there's really there's no case for invoking MD3 um, or, approve, or approving the application in accordance with the development plan as one of those sites that we would treat as falling with MD3. That being the case, the, 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 the really the substantive issue then is taking into account the fallback position that we've got in relation to the existing consent for three houses as to whether or not the scheme now pro proposed pro provides 
um, betterment over that scheme in terms of the quality of development and um, the benefits to be had. Um, so there's, there's, there's an issue of um, the fallback and then over, as I've set out towards the end of the report, there's the issue of the overall planning balance and, and as to whether or not there, there's a case and it would be a case for approving the application as a departure from the development plan um, because it because the material circumstances warrant um, doing that when you look at the application in terms of the overall balance of the benefits uh, and the disbenefits really. And in this case, the conclusion is that in the advice is that taking into account that there is a scheme here that would produce betterment in relation to the quality of the built development, the impact on the conservation area, but through the provision of the um, new lands, new and enhanced la landscaping plan and the management, the affordable housing contribution on, on balance, the, 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 the recommendation is one here that this scheme is one where there is a case for for granting approval. So in this particular instance, the recommendation to the committee is that the application is approved because that balance um, leads to the conclusion that overall there is betterment to be achieved. And I'll end on that note, Chair. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Chair David Evans, any public speakers on this matter will have submitted a written statement to be read out in accordance with the revised for public speaking. The local member may read their own or may elect the solicitor also to read theirs. Can the solicitor now read out any statements, please? Um, thank you, Chair. The first speaker we've got on this is Councillor and Andy Boddington as local member, um, and he's asked if he may read his own statement. Thank you, Chair. This has been a long journey. Plans for housing on this site were first lodged in May 2012. A completely unsuitable scheme for three detached bourgeois homes was approved in 2014 when the council was under duress because it lacked a five year land supply. In other circumstances, it's unlikely that any housing would have been approved on this site, which lies outside the development boundary and is in a wildlife corridor. Tree felling has since reduced the site's amenity value. But natural rewilding has boosted its, its contribution to biodiversity. The scruffiest areas often make the best contribution to wildlife. The scheme this committee discussed last month undermined that biodiversity. This scheme keeps the important wildlife corridor along the Corve just about intact. I support the officer's recommendation that this scheme is approved it is modern it, it is modern in design and that is appropriate for the site it is less damaging than other applications for this site members will have noted that there are more conditions than normal attached to the recommendation for approval the conditions recognize the importance of this site to biodiversity in ludlow i would urge that these were accepted in full thank you thank you have any other speakers, please? Uh, no further speakers, Chair. Right. Uh, does the plan officer wish to clarify any points or any responses? Uh, not, not at this stage, Chair. Uh, OK. Um, Chair, to committee members for their comments and indicate the chat function if you wish to speak. The solicitor will let me know who is next to speak, so I now open it to committee. Um, thank you, Chair. David Turner's indicated that he'd like to speak, please. Councillor Turner, please. Thank you, Chair David Turner. Um, I'd like to thank the um, planning officer for the um, detailed um, run through of the photographs and also um, the um, extensive, as he said, um, recommendation. Um, having seen, having been through this in July, um, uh, clearly committee members will be fairly well acquainted um, with what's being proposed. Um, I've got no um, no questions. I, I endorse what um, um, Andy Boddington has just uh, has just said. Um, and on that basis, um, I would like to uh, uh, propose um, that we, re we accept the officer recommendation. Thank you. Anyone next, please? Uh, next chair, Councillor Tyndall. Councillor Robert Tyndall, please. Can you hear me all right? Yes, thank you. Yes, I, I would like to second Councillor Turner's proposal that we accept the officer's recommendation. Um, 
I don't suppose there's any way if by doing so we can sort of cancel the permission granted to the three house scheme, please. Andrew, could you answer that? It, 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 it is in theory possible to... Um, Sorry, can you speak up just a little bit? Yeah, can you, can you hear me, okay? Yeah. Just. It, yeah. It, it 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 is in theory possible to to um, uh, I'm trying to find the right word here. I, I suppose you know revoke a, revoke. That's the word I'm looking for. To revoke a planning permission, it's not legally a terribly easy thing to do. Um, I think, from memory, it does involve the permission of the Secretary of State. Um, so yes, in theory, the answer to your question is in in theory we can, but it's actually quite a hard thing to do. We wouldn't recommend it in a case like this because. Um, it, it usually arises either where um, that th there's something fundamentally gone wrong in the planning process or where you've got two developments where it may be possible to implement both simultaneously. And in this particular case, because um, we, we could in theory end up with three planning permissions on the table. Well, for that's what worries me. So we, you, you know, you, but you can only ever implement w one of them. Um, so, you know, we. It, it, the, the other way that, that can, you can get around it is if the developer is willing to end, enter into a, one, a section 106 agreement where you don't actually revoke the permission, but they simply legally undertake not to implement um, you know, a permission that's there. So that's a slightly different way around it, and it's a slightly simpler way. Well, um, Chairman, we, uh, do you think we ought to perhaps recommend that as a condition? Yes, sir. Thank you. that from Kim. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm not. I'm not sure that we could actually put it in as a condition, unless Andrew thinks otherwise. Um, no, it's it's that, sorry. sorry. Sorry, a section 106 agreement. I, mean, I meant, didn't mean to say condition. Well, I did mean, but I didn't mean it. Chair, can I can I come back in on that? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, 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 essentially, it, it, it's for the developer to come forward and say yes, if necessary, we'll, we'll, we 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 would agree to an additional clause in the section 106 agreement. It doesn't in itself revoke the planning permission. It, it's just an undertaking that that um, the existing permission would not be implemented. And we are we are in a position where technically the existing consent has been implemented insofar as they've started work on the site but the intention and as far as the work that's been undertaken was was purely to implement the the permission so that it was it was commenced before it time expired um, yes well but in, in that case chairman could i add as a condition to my second that one of the clauses in the section 106 agreement is that they will not implement the the three uh, the three house app application because I think as we all well and um, three of us have agreed that this one is better than both the previous schemes. Thank you. Yes, we'll look at that, take that on board. Any other members wish to speak please? Um Councillor Shyington. Councillor Shyington please. <clears throat> Thank you Chairman, Councillor Shyington, Clipper Division. Um I fully agree that we've got to do something with this site. It was a, a very neglected industrial site initially, although it did have some uh, self-seeded woodland, uh, which did develop. Um, my main reason for supporting this application is um, that uh, there will be more tree planting. And I note that on page 40, um, condition states native species used to be of local provenance, and I do applaud that. Please let's not have a, any imported trees on that particular site. There's plenty of locally grown trees that are available and the repair of the linny wall. What I would like to know is who is going to be responsible for the future care maintenance management plan of that site once these houses are built? Please, Andrew. Yep, sure, if, I, if I can come back on that chair. Yeah, um, part, part of the applicant's proposal as part of the management plan is that one, once the houses are built and occupied, the intention is to set up a management company which will be controlled by the residents of the site. And, and they will and they will be bound by the management plan. So it become it becomes the responsibility of the, the, poten the potential future buyers and occupiers of the site that they will manage the site um, and the, the the onus in terms of implementation of that management plan through the conditions of the planning permission will fall on the management company. 
so the, the, the I mean, I'm assuming the developer does it because they don't want to, to, to have any long-term liability although that's not in its, itself a, a matter for us but no there is there is pre express provision to, de to deal with that very question because it's a very important question as to how you actually secure the future management and that 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 is included in the management plan. I would certainly like to be sure that that is implemented because I've seen it elsewhere and to be quite honest it falls into a disarray should we say a year or two down the line. Thank you Chair. Thank Chair, you. can I just come back further on that? One, one, of, one, of, one, of, one of the things that's in the management plan, and you'll see it in the conditions too, and, and this, 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 this came from the, from, from the applicant, is they've actually suggested having um, a regular review, in, including involving the council in that. So what I've written into the conditions is that there's an annual review for the first five years, and then it's every five years thereafter. So that we, we, we you know, that there's an element of control is, is retained through the permission in terms of ensuring that the management plan is actually delivered as it's been offered. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Um, okay, Joe, we've had indication from Councillor Huffer. You'd like to speak, please. Councillor Richard Huffer, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to add my um, support to this scheme. Um, it is a contemporary scheme. It may not be to everybody's um, liking. My, yeah, what I would like like to add, anybody that's been through um, Ludlow over recent weeks and seen the mayhem that the closure on King Street has created and the additional pressures that it has put on the Linney, I'm glad, I'm glad to see that um, this, this proposal will add significant highway benefits. Um, traffic movements on that stretch of the road has concerned me for a long, long period of time. So on that, um, I, I, if, 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 if Councillor Tyndall's um, recommendation to, you know, to, to, to second this is conditional, I would be happy to second this with, um, uh, with no, no conditions because this is a significant improvement on what's already been, been granted. So um, yeah, with that, whether, whether, whether Councillor Tyndall, you know, uh, Tyndall's offer is conditional. Uh, if, if it is, mine is unconditional. Um, Chairman, you. could I just say that my my seconding, uh, I hope Richard Harper understands, it's only conditional because I wanted a clause in the Section 106 agreement that they will not implement the three house planning application that has got consent. That's the only condition that I wanted because I think most of us have agreed that this four house scheme is better than what um, Councillor Boddington described as the Bijou scheme. That's the only condition and I hope Richard Harper understands that. Thank you. Th thank you, th thank you, Robert. Any more speakers, please? Um, yeah. You've got an indication from um, Andrew and Tim Rogers, but I think Andrew's spoken. So um, I think Tim Rogers would like to say a few words, please. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, may, I might be saying what Andrew was about to say, uh, and forgive me if it, Andrew it might want to speak again, if not. Um, just with regard to the conditioning and, and, and or reference to the Section 106 agreement, my understanding is that the application doesn't require a, a Section 106 agreement currently. So um, the requirement to um, uh, confirm that they wouldn't implement the three house scheme would would mean the requirement for a 106 in its own right and in order to justify that it would have to be reasonable um, and I'm not sure that it would it, we'd have to be convinced that the implementation of that scheme would was unacceptable and I'm not sure that anyone is saying that they're just saying that the the, the current scheme for the four houses is a better scheme um, so I think in all, and, and if you were to try to impose the 106, that could potentially be challenged by the applicant who uh, it could appeal against non-determination on the basis that we're trying to Im uh, impose a, a 106 that's unreasonable. I think we have to take it um, at, at, at kind of as, as a real likelihood that the, the scheme that will be implemented is the one that's most financially rewarding to the applicant, and that's going to be the, the current scheme that's before you. Thank you. Any other speakers, please? 
chair can i just can i just come, come back as well yeah. um the, 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 the recommendation here does does include the recommend it does include a section 106 agreement but as and it's been offered as a unilateral undertaking by the applicant but it's purely for the purposes of the affordable housing contribution and and there's no there's no other purpose in it in theory it's open to the applicant to, to offer not not to to build the the, the scheme the, the the existing three three house scheme but for the reasons tim said it, it would probably be difficult to require it so um I, I i would have to agree with what tim has actually said there but there would be a requirement for for a, for a section 106 or in this case a unilateral undertaking has been offered by the applicant um just one other point chair i should have said at the very outset you'll see in the recommendation here that the um if 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 the committee is remind is minded to approve the application today um that because it would be a departure from the development plan we've had to place a further um add in the uh, the, the press to, uh, for the application as a departure from the development plan um it was just down to the way the timings of the adverts worked but the period for um responding to that advert doesn't run out until the 3rd of, of November. Hence, the recommendation today is that approval is delegated to the head of planning and services at the end of that period. OK, thank you. Any other speakers? Um, um, Councillor Turner. Councillor Turner. Thank you, Chair David Turner. Um, the proposal I make stands um, and um, um, uh, and um, I, I, with the greatest respect to Councillor Tyndall, um, I and having listened to the advice from officers, um, it's as um, my recommendation, my proposal is as per the recommendation without any addition. I, I have just typed that I would now second it without amendment. I'm okay. totally overwhelmed. Thank you. Right, no other speakers? Right, if there are no other speakers, please can I have a proposal and a seconder? I believe it's been proposed by David Turner, seconded by Robert Tyndall. Uh, Solicitor to confirm and present the vote of the name committee of the people who are allowed to vote. Vote yeah. in favour or against. Thank you, Chair. Um, can I just confirm that only those members that were present for the whole item can vote? Um, and if I just read out each member's name in turn, and if they could please indicate whether they're for or against the proposal to accept the Planning officer's recommendation. Councillor Evans? For. Councillor Turner? He's on mute. Councillor Turner, can you unmute, please? I, I certainly can. Four. <laughs> Four, thank you. Fine. Uh, Councillor Harris? Councillor Harris, can you unmute as well, please? Doesn't appear that Councillor Harris is with us at the moment. Mm. Councillor Hignett? Four. Councillor Huffer? Four. Councillor Parsons? Four. Councillor Shankton? Four. Councillor Tyndall? Four. And Councillor Woodward? Four. If I can just check again if um, Councillor Harris is with us, please. I'm here, sorry. Hi, we, you, have you been um, part of the whole debate? I have. Yeah. Okay, then, so if, I could just indicate, if you could just indicate, please, whether you want to vote for or against the recommendation proposed. <sighs> I'm against the recommendation. Against? Yeah. OK, thank you. So we have. Eight votes for and one vote against, Chair. Thank you, David Evans, Chair. I now confirm the vote of that application and the vote is carried uh, that you uh, seek approval and it's delegated to officers. Thank you very much. We now move on to the next application, which is Orchard Cottage 5, Crackley Bank, Sh uh, Sheriff Ailes. Andrew, please. Thank you, Chair. Yep, it's me again. Um, right, Chair, this is um, a bit like the previous application, but in some respects, this is this follows on from an earlier application. Um, this is an application for the change of use of private kennels to boarding kennels um, at Orchard Cottage 5, Crackley Bank. Um, 
it's an app, it's a site that has a, a little bit of history as is set out in the report. It's, it's a somewhat unusual site in that um, it's a, a house that's set. In fact, should we move on to the slides because it, it's probably easier to show you this. It's a house that's set right on the corner of the junction of the B4379 and the A5 um, to the north of Schiffnell. Um, the property itself was originally a domestic dwelling house um, and the, the applicant um, bred dogs. Um, you know, for, for his own purposes, um, and then subsequently decided to develop the site as a kennels, um, as is set out in the report. Um, the actual application, as you'll see on the, the slide in front of you now, relates to um, two lots of kennels that were built on the site, um, I believe both under permitted development rights, which are shown in red. So you've got a, a, a series of five kennels at the top end of the site there. Um, which um, is a set out report, uh, report if the application was approved would, would include uh, five kennels. Um, I think there's a, uh, there's a, 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 a whelping um, section of it as well, plus uh, a, a, um, the, the, the grooming parlour. And then there's four additional kennels in the other part, um, which is to, to the, the south end of the site there. Um, if we just run through the slides actually, I'll t I'll, just to give you a flavour of what the site is like. If we can just move on to the next slide, please. Can we move on to the next slide, Tim? Yeah, there's, I think the rest. I think the rest of the slides are just photographs here. So um, th this is actually the view um, of the junction. Um, say so that the site is on the left hand side of this photograph here. Um, I don't know how, how familiar members are with this, this particular location, um, but it is it is a junction across the A5 that then leads up to Sheriff Hales to the north. Um, it's a fairly fast straight bit of the A5. Um, you'll see on this photograph that there are traffic lights at the junction. Now those are relatively recently installed um, and they weren't there at the time of the previous application um, as is set out in the report on, on page 56. Um, we had a previous application a couple of years ago, which was determined in, at the end of last year, which, which was essentially for the kennels. But at that time, uh, the proposal was that, that um, the uh, uh, clients, customers of the kennels could come and deliver and pick up their own dogs that were um, uh, boarding at the, at the kennels. The difference between that application and this one is now that because the original application was refused essentially on highway grounds because the access is so close to the junction and there were concerns about whether or not the site could operate um, safely because of the proximity of the junction, is the, the, this application has now been amended so that the, uh, the operator of the kennels would only um, operate a collection system whereby uh, he went and picked up and uh, returned people's dogs rather than them coming to the kennels in an attempt to overcome the original reasons for refusal. But you'll you'll see from this photograph here how, how close, I think, I don't know if it's possible to, 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 to show you, but yes, just where the cursor is, there's an entrance in there. So you, that gives you an idea of how close to the junction um, the actual entrance into, into the kennels is. I think if we just go through the other slides, it'll just show you the other views around the site. Yeah, so that's the that that's that that's the access in. Um, you'll see there there is a small area um, which is just off the road where you you can just about get a very small car in. I think it's about three and a half meters in in length. Um, with the original application, the, the the I think that particularly the concern was that although there is a gate which you can't see on that photograph there, which is electrically controlled, and there is a yard inside where in which people who are visiting the kennels um, could actually drive into and turn around, although it's very confined, um, it is possible to do it. Um, the, the, the difficulty on this junction is that there's no guarantee that people would actually do that and you can't force them to, to do that. And there was a particular concern that um, people may instead choose simply to stop off at that point of access with their car partly on the road and partly on, on the driveway. You'll also see further up the road there on the left hand side, yes there there's, there, there, there's actually an informal lay-by. Um, now we can't say for definite that, that that's been used but I've certainly seen vehicles parked there. So the, the, the key issue with the original application was the proximity of this, this access in relation to, to the junction. And if we just carry on forward through the slides, I think the next slide shows the gate. If we can have the next slide, Tim. Yeah, that that gives you a better idea of, of the distance between the edge of the road and the gate. <laughs> and that, and that, 
and those gates are, uh, are, are uh, electronically controlled so they can be open and shut remotely. Um, there is a very small yard in behind that gate and it is possible to turn a car around in there, or, albeit that it is very tight. Um, and then if we just, if we have the next photograph which shows the view looking back towards the junction, um, again that just shows you how close to the junction the site actually is here. Um, and then I think there's another, another couple of photographs. <coughs> Again, what it's what you'll see you'll see in the report. The one interesting point that's been raised here is the traffic lights are. Um, I think they've only been installed in the last 12 months or so. Um, and they, they, I think one of the objectors has raised the interesting point that with the installation of the traffic lights, what you get now is the bunching up of traffic with the traffic lights, and particularly of this traffic coming from the Sheriff Hales direction across the junction. And if someone were to pull in either into the access into, into the kennels or even partly into the informal lay by here, and they, any vehicle is parked on the edge of the road, that if you've got traffic queuing to go from this direction to go across the junction, then you may find that vehicles can't get past. And that that's, that, I, I just point that out because that's one of the issues that's been raised here. It is potentially more of an acute issue with traffic lights because you, you've, you've got a higher likelihood of standing in traffic at that junction because of the phasing of the lights. Um, I think there's another one or two more photographs. If we just go through those, Tim, please. And that just shows you the, the the house that's there. It's a somewhat unusual site because though it's very small, it's got a lot of buildings on it with sheds and, um, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a garage as well as the kennels there. And I think there's one more photograph, which is just the view back across the A5. So as you'll see in the report, um, the reasons for refusal on the original application were because of this inability of the of the, of the applicant to actually control um, visiting members of the public to the to the kennels. The whole point of this application is to overcome that by saying, well, we won't. The 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 the, the owner of the kennels work will will do a co a collection collection and delivery system, so there aren't visiting members of the public. Um, so the recommendation that's actually been made here um, in the report is to essentially allow the applicant to have a trial period to see if um, this can work safely. Um, you'll see that there are still objections um, to this, um, including from the parish council, and I believe the local members have got, made a comment too, which still essentially raise the same concerns about whether or not the kennels can operate safely, because the, the, the concern with the previous application was that it was not within the control of the applicant to uh, um, to manage visitors to the site and even if there's a, uh, a a collection and delivery system whether or not it may st may still not raise the same issues the, the recommendation as i say is that is essentially to grant a, a planning permission for a 12-month trial period and to see if it can operate acceptably um, and, uh, and whether what, what the applicant has now proposed is an acceptable solution so that, that's the recommendation chair thank you uh, David Edmund, Chair, are we any uh, public speakers on this, uh, Solicitor, please? Um, thank you, Chair. Yes, we have the first speaker is Denise Reynolds, who is the Town Clerk on behalf of Shifnal Town Council. Can you read that one out, please? Okay, thank you. Shifnal Town Council wished to reiterate its strong objections to this retrospective application on highway grounds. The only change to the previous refusal is the proposal for the applicant to collect and deliver dogs. It is noted that highways have requested more information on how the collection system would work in practice, how many staff are on site and how the system is to be enforced and have raised concerns on these points. None of this information appears to have been submitted and highways have not said that they approve the proposal even on a temporary basis. The committee are urged not to grant permission until the additional information requested by highways is obtained the public consulted and a recommendation given by highways. In particular, are any staff employed on the site and how will the system be enforced by Shropshire Council? How will they be able to differentiate between visitors to the household as opposed to the commercial visitors? How many extra vehicle trips on a dangerous section of road will be made into and out of the site in connection with the business, even if by the applicant? This will still be a significant increase on a normal household activity. Um, next chair, we've got Councillor Kevin Turley, local member, who would like to read his own statement, please. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Chair, Councillors. Good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to sort of read the following statement for refusal. Um, as 
Sheriff Hales Parish Council and Shifnal Town Council themselves again have reiterated concerns. My statement reads, there seems to be no change in the following application in the same area as refused before. Residents from the area have brought, uh, as this is retrospective, brought forward complaints of dogs barking from the area. Whilst I can't sort of say it's this area, the concerns have been brought forward. My main concern would be the junction and its safety issues have been recorded on many occasions, hence the traffic lights have come forward and been put in over the last 12 months, as has been said, due to the other issues. Since this, I have twice myself seen an issue, issues with vehicles parked for this property. I'd like to sort of take that back a little. Whilst you've seen on the photographs today, there's a lay by just by the cottage. I can't guarantee this is there. This is my was my personal opinion. It's it's for that position. But as has been sort of said in the report, it has caused problems with the backing up of traffic towards Shifnal uh, and up the road. Uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought waiting for the lights. It forms a pinch point. I've had a stop closely up the hill towards Shifnal and it's a concern as vehicles come down the hill that somebody can run into the back of you. At the time where a HGV may need to exit the traffic lights, the, as I've said, there may be a pinch point created and as has been said by officers between vehicles either parked in the layby or sort of sticking out into the road and the vehicles waiting at the traffic lights. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there any other speakers, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, we've got um, the agent, Tony Higgins, um, for Enviro Consult Limited, who says, contrary to the committee report and the town council and ward councillor comments, and then in bold, this is not a retrospective application. In 2017, the applicant was made aware of the need for planning permission for a change of use. Since this time, the business activities have ceased and only the applicant's own dog kennel, dogs occupy the kennels. Thus, any parked cars on the verge are not associated with the application site. They belong to walkers. In 2015, Shropshire Council granted a dog boarding kennels consent. Due to an oversight, planning consent for a change of use was not obtained. The kennels operated successfully for two years without any complaints to Shropshire Council in respect of barking dogs and there were no road accidents attributed to the kennels. Comments regarding barking have only been made since residents have been informed about the planning application. Hence, it is not unreasonable to conclude that barking is not an issue, as confirmed by regulatory services. Members are respectfully reminded that the previous application was not refused on matters relating to barking dogs. Previous reason for refusal was because officers considered that safe parking and access cannot be achieved. This is despite the case officer for the 2017 application managing to enter and exit the site in a forward gear during his site visit on a video of the applicant entering and exiting the site in his large 4x4. The applicant acknowledges that manoeuvring space is limited within the site. Therefore, in order to overcome the previous reason for refusal, the proposal is now for collection and delivery service only. There will be no customers calling at the site. There are also no additional employees. There are only eight kennels which are fully licensed by Shropshire Council under application 16 slash 01633 slash board. Therefore, any additional vehicle movements will be limited by the fact that the number of kennels is low. As noted previously by Shropshire Council Highways, the existing gates are sufficiently set back from the road to enable vehicles to be off the public highway. They are electronically controlled, which ensures that the applicant does not need to get out of his vehicle to open the gates when entering the site. The proposed use of the existing kennels for dog boarding and grooming will not result in any significant additional vehicles entering or exiting the site. The on-site parking and manoeuvring space is sufficient for the applicant to enter and exit the site in a forward gear. The access is existing and as noted in the committee report, the NPPF states that development should only be prevented or refused on highway grounds if there would be an unacceptable impact on highway safety or the residual cumulative impacts on the road network would be severe. Crossroads is now controlled by traffic lights. As such, it is deemed that the proposal would not raise any significant highway issues to justify the refusal of this application, 
as concluded by the case officer who has recommended approval. Therefore, it is respectfully requested that planning permission is approved as recommended by your officer. Um, that concludes the speaker's chair. Thank you. Thank you. Does the planning officer wish to add any comments, please? No? OK. As the chair, David Evans, I now open up for committee members to make comments. Please, the solicitor, indicate who would like to speak. Um, yes, I've got um, Simon Harris has indicated he'd like to speak, please, Chair. Councillor Harris, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I went past this place last week to a farm auction in the area, and when you come up to the traffic lights, it is distinctly obvious now that there is a massive traffic calming air there. It used to be quite violent trying to cross that junction. But it is distinctly now 150% far superior. So uh, you can't help but only be doing 20 mile an hour towards the light when you pass uh, this particular place. Um, it's an outstanding job putting lights there, by the way, by the iways team. Um, also, I've just noted by the photographs, uh, and it does uh, jog my memory, um, that the the gates where you go into the property are half covered in bush and I'm thinking that maybe the applicant uh, should be made to tidy his edge up and um, so that the, the area including the area into the gated area becomes sl sort of more prominent um, and apart from that I can't see any difference in why this application shouldn't go through so I'm going to suggest to this committee that I propose that we accept this application Thank you. Next speaker, please. Um, next speaker is Councillor Boddington, please. Councillor Andy Boddington, please. Thank you, Chair Andy Boddington. Uh, the condition number one is that this will be monitored for one year. How can we do that as a council? How is monitoring going to happen? Are we waiting for an accident to happen? therefore a statistic which is the last thing we want to do as a planning committee i just don't think this is a practical uh, condition for a planning application because we have no resources to monitor what's happening on the site and i'm certainly not thinking i'm in favor of this scheme thank you next speaker please um councillor turner Councillor david turner please Thank you, Chair David Turner. Um, my point is aligned to Councillor Boddington's um, in as much as um, condition three, um, as, as as mentioned by the by, by the planning officer, says there will be no collection or delivery of dogs by members of the public. If somebody wishes to or, or has decided uh, that they wish to collect their dog, maybe before the end of its planned stay, who's going to stop the people going to the site? I mean, you know, I mean, the, the, I mean, it, the, it, it just strikes me as being in, unenforceable um, to, to to prevent people going to have a look. And and as a dog owner, and this isn't a planning issue, um, uh, uh, most people who are putting um, their dog in the kennels would want to see the um, accommodation that's going to be provided. That's a different matter and probably could be settled with a photographs or a, or a website or something like that, but I, I don't see how we can prevent people going there. Um, having seen the um, photographs um, and uh, heard about the the, the, the traffic lights, uh, Councillor um, Harris, I'm, I'm sure is right, and as much as the, the traffic is slow moving, and in this instance, it's probably uh, just as much of a problem as fast moving traffic, because slow moving traffic will, as um, the planning officer said, uh, mean that if there, if there is any um, vehicular movement um, with only effectively one 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 lane running, um, it's going to be um, more difficult um, to access and, um, and gain egress from the site. Um, I'm not at all um, happy with this. Thank you. Okay. Next speaker, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Motley. Thank, thank you very much. Um, yeah, following on from what Councillor Turner has just said, I quite agree with him that I would not be putting any of my dogs, not that anybody would have any of my dogs probably, um, into a boarding kennel without having a very good look at it first. So I just can't see how you can stifle 
all visitors to the site in any way, shape or form. Also, I notice that dog grooming is offered. I don't know whether that is all done by the applicant or whether they, they um, um, have people coming in to do that. But again, I and the third thing that really worries me about this application is um, that clearly the entrance onto the site is extremely narrow and shallow. Um, and um, if, if you had two cars arriving at the same time, I think it would be a huge problem. And it also seems to me that from the point of view of a business model, um, undertaking to collect and deliver all the dogs uh, for, 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 for boarding, grooming or whatever else um, is not actually going to help your profit margins in the very least. I just am afraid but I don't think one can get round the highways issues on this uh, on this application at all. And I'm afraid I'm not going to be supporting it. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Parsons has indicated he'd like to speak, please. Tony Parsons, please. Uh, Councillor Tony Parsons. Yeah, I'm I'm not minded to be accept this uh, particular application. But what I do believe is that uh, highways have asked for three points of clarification which we don't seem to have had from the applicant my concerns are how this collection and delivery service will be enforced and also the road safety issues but because we haven't had a response from the applicant i think that this application should be deferred until we do have a response on those three issues raised by highways uh, and then we'll be able to take a decision Thank you. Next speaker. Um, Councillor Hignett. Councillor Hignett, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Hignett, Ray Valley Ward. Uh, I want to say from the outset that I don't like retrospective applications anyway, but of course I will uh, base this on the information that's available for this particular planning application. I also note the applicant's agent doesn't seem to think that it is a retrospective application. Um, there was mention by a previous speaker about the fact that the, uh, well, it was by the agent actually, that the uh, lay-by nearby uh, is often used by people who park their cars to go walking. I don't see any reason if this application uh, was passed why these walkers would not continue to use that lay-by. So therefore, that takes away any possibility of um, what I assume will be some visitors to the kennels. Uh, it means that they couldn't park in that lay-by, so they would be needing to use the gate. And I agree with previous speakers that uh, it's inevitable that there will be some visitors to the kennels, whether the applicant wants to uh, collect and deliver all the dogs. If one of the dogs gets poorly and they need to call the owner, that owner is going to go straight to the kennels. I don't see them putting it in a van and taking the dog back to its owner for, for various reasons that, that may crop up. I also think that the uh, the kennels like to be inspected not just by customers but there may be uh, council officials that need to go and visit maybe the kennel club and and so there are bound to be visitors to this you can't say that there will not be an increase in traffic and i also as has been uh, mentioned before I'm very concerned about how close it is i can only judge it uh, from the uh, the pictures that we've seen because I've, I've not visited the area myself i think it would have been very beneficial to uh, to do that but of course we can't at the moment but I am concerned about this application for the reasons I've stated. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, no, 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 no other indications at the moment, um, speakers, Chair. Right, OK. Uh, is there any office, uh, rec um, comments the planning officer wishes to make? Uh, yes, Chair, I'll just pick up on some of those points that have been made. Um, as far as uh, Councillor Boddington's point about monitoring is concerned, um, obviously we can't have you know, co constant monitoring going going on. It, it's like an awful lot of sites. There can there can be occasional monitoring um, if 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 there are issues that have been reported. We are to a degree reliant upon re reports or complaints that are made. And then, um, as with most sites, the reality is we would probably then um, go and undertake a monitoring exercise ourselves uh, ourselves if necessary. But it you know it, it is the case we couldn't constantly monitor. Um, I think Councillor Turner made the same point. Um, I think Councillor Motley just raised the issue about additional employees. 
and I think that's one of the questions that's been raised in the comments from the highway authority. Uh, I think, as, as I understand it, the, the the intention is the kennels would employ one person, but it's unclear whether or not that's actually the applicant themselves, or it would be an additional person on the site. If it's an additional person on the site, then obviously that introduces an element of additional traffic and car parking um, within the kennels. Um, and then I think Councillor Parsons has just raised the issues of the highways or com com authority comments and whether or not those have been responded to. To my, to my knowledge, they, they haven't been, but I think that's part of the reason why the recommendation has been raised in the way that it has it has um i think that's probably all i can respond on at the moment chair thank you thank you uh, david Evans, chair have we seems we've got no more speakers have we got a proposal um, um sorry chair um councillor boddington has just um no, asked to speak please Councillor boddington thank you chair uh, i wish to propose refusal on highways grounds just straightforward. I mean, we had that discussion. It isn't suitable from highways ter terms, and I propose refusal. Well, thank you. Have you got a second of your proposal? Councillor Turner would like to speak, please, Chair. Councillor Turner. Yes, um, thank you, Chair David Turner. I'm seconding Andy Boddington's um, proposal. Thank you. Um, Chair. Chair. Sorry. Yeah. It's Tim Rogers, Area Planning Manager. I just, just. Uh, I'd like to just clarify because um, I, I understand what Councillor Boddington is saying and what his proposition is saying refusal on highway grounds. Um, I don't think we've got the information before us to decide that there is a significant traffic hazard, which is what's required by the MPPF. What you could refuse on is clearly the applicant has had the ability, the opportunity to respond to the questions raised by highways. So you could um, you could refuse on, on the basis that you ha have insufficient information to make an informed judgment about the potential highway impacts. OK, thank you. That right, uh, Chair, Chair, I accept that. Thank you. Councillor Chair, you accept that? Councillor Chair. Thank you, Chair. I'm struggling to find the mute. Yes, I, I'm, I'm happy with that, yeah. Thank you. Um, is there a proposal on the table before by Councillor Harris to um, support the recommendation of the application? Did he have a seconder? Um, no, I've got no, rec no record of any seconder to that proposal, Chair. Right. Okay, so we have a proposal and a seconder. Uh, could the solicitor ask those in favour of the recommendation that's been put forward, please? By, by refusal. Um, thank you, Chair. So we've got a proposal um, to refuse the application um, based on insufficient information um, to assess the potential highway impacts as suggested by um, Tim. That's correct. So if I could take the um, members' votes, please, and just remind you again that you can only vote if you are present for the whole item. Um, Councillor Evans. I support the proposal for uh, refusal. Councillor Turner. For. Councillor Boddington. For. Councillor Harris. Against. Councillor Hignett. For. Councillor Huffer. For. Councillor Motley. For. Councillor Parsons. For Councillor Shinton. For Councillor Tindall. Abstain. I wasn't present for the whole period of time, but not for the reasons that you might think. OK, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Councillor Woodward, please. For So we have, uh, sorry, one, two, three, nine members have voted for the refusal, one member against and one abstained. Thank you, so that is carried for a refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we go on to item number seven, which is the formal council offices at Westgate Regionals. Tim. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Richard Fortune, the principal planner on this one. Uh, yeah, just uh, as a starter, just to advise members that the amendments recommendation 
Um, at the present time, uh, Shropshire Council does the owner of the site, and there is a legal issue whereby we could not enter into a section 106 agreement with ourselves. So if you bear with me, I'll, I'll read. We've got a sort of a very long amendment to recommendation to cover the theoretical scenario that should members resolve the grant permission, that Shropshire Council would still be in ownership at the time that the planning permission would then be issued. So if I could just read out what the amendment recommendation is, it would be grant permission subject to the completion of a section 106 agreement in respect to the affordable housing provision within the scheme and a financial contribution for the traffic regulation order where the applicants have completed purchase of the site prior to the planning date of the planning permission decision notice or were a Shropshire Council to retain ownership interest at that time to the completion of a memorandum of understanding to secure affordable housing provision within the scheme and a financial contribution to the traffic regulation order to the conditions set out in Appendix 1 and also an additional condition. Uh, that condition would read, the apologies for the wordiness of it, but it has to cover this legal situation. No development shall be commenced by any freehold owner of the site, say for Shropshire Council, acting by themselves or through their nominees, until an agreement under Section 106 of the Channel Country Planning Act 1990 has been completed to secure affordable housing in accordance with the Council's adopted Title of Affordability of Housing Planning Statement document or any subsequent replacement of that 2012 document and the financial contribution to the traffic regulation order. Reason for that condition being to secure then affordable housing within development and in the interest of highway safety. The um, situation is that the reference to the memorandum of understanding would mean that it would ensure that in the theoretical situation of Shropshire Council doing the development, we would still be securing affordable housing on the site and dealing with the traffic regulation order. So as I say, that, that, that just, just uh, that situation arises because at this present time, uh, the Staffordshire Housing Association are not currently the owners of the site. Uh, this, this is a, a, like a site which members may obviously recall as the uh, former Bridge or District Council offices. In January 2015, we had an outline application considered at committee where it would resolve the grant and permission for residential redevelopment of the site. Uh, I think the best thing now is to just work through the slides to show the scheme that's before us now for consideration. The slide before you now shows the existing um, site context. We can see the sort of H plan of the existing council office building in the middle of the site there. So the south of that is a garage office building and to the north, just outlined is also a similar one. It also gives an indication of existing tree cover around the perimeter of the site primarily. To the northwest is the uh, police station building, which is the larger building we can see in that illustration. And then to the southwest, residential development that backs onto the uh, site. And then to the southeast, we can see the housing that's on the opposite side of the road facing onto the site. Uh, to the north again is housing that backs onto what's called the, the Hermit um, Tasley Bank, which is the, the road that runs along the uh, northern side of the site. So we, we have that and then at the extreme um, eastern uh, point of the site at the road junction on the right there is a smaller building which uh, we can see right there, which is currently two flats. Historically, that have been a small shop premises. Next slide, please. Uh, this again is gives you uh, some photographs showing the existing uh, building on the site. Uh, it is giving views around, around, around that and uh, its current uh, boarded up condition. Next slide, please. Uh, th this shows the proposed uh, site layout. Um, the proposal here is for 31 dwelling units. Uh, in the committee report, the actual numbers, they do apologise for this in the uh, proposal section uh, at 1.1. Don't actually give the full listing. Essentially, there will be three two bedrooms, 21 three bedrooms, two four bedrooms, and five five bedrooms dwellings in this scheme. 
six of the units would be uh, affordable housing with the 0.2 of the 20 percent requirement made up as a financial contribution uh, the site layout here sort of demonstrates that on the um if you look at the top of the screen which i'll call an northern edge given the, the way it's orientated this shows the, the primary area of open public open space to be retained in the development which contains a number of existing trees on the site so the uh left northwest sort of the northwest corner as it were um if we cross over to the uh, to the, the western side of the site you can see the police station building which is just outside there which is close on that boundary and there's quite a group of significant trees actually outside the application site but which are uh, situated there which are, are part and parcel of the sort of wooded character that there currently is along Tassie Bank. The uh, arrangement shows a T-shaped plan of housing which in many senses here is dictated really by the constraints of what is around the site with um, residential development to the um, to the south and to avoid the situation of having any housing sort of backing on to the highways or more uh, open vantage points. And to the extreme right hand side of the screen we can see the arrangements for dwellings there which you actually have individual accesses onto the uh, Ludlow Road. If let's move to the next one please, next screen. Uh, the, this is a computer generated imaging that's been submitted with the application to a given artist impression essentially development. In the top image, the access point we see there is the access point onto to Tassie Bank, the, sort of the main access point to the uh, T-shaped internal access road. Uh, in the bottom right hand corner image, the image there beyond the trees is where the police station building is. And this essentially does show the uh, intentions for retaining the, uh, the greenery planting along that uh, uh, Tassie Bank frontage. Uh, the illustrations are shown in terms of the house types. They again are of a, a sort of a contemporary style. It, it, they do have elements of a traditional form, but they do um, do, do try to introduce some um, features that are, uh, say, add to and are probably complementary to the more traditional mix of properties around around the site. So their their built form is fairly traditional, but in terms of the actual materials and detailing and fenestration, that is. Um, sought to give them a, a contemporary uh, contemporary look. Next view, please. In this, this is situation shows the, the trees to be removed, which are those marked in the pinky red and uh, green being those to be retained. Uh, and as I say, th th this really is just, just shows you know, clear with the nature of the existing old council building being the H, plan in the middle of the site. Uh, these trees currently are also ones that are sort of on the perimeter of the site and uh, uh, you know or, or close to the car parking but uh, that, that shows the extent of the intended removal. Next slide please. Uh, this is an indication of existing ex new tree planting is proposed to, to supplement what would be retained in the open space areas. Uh, if we just move to the next slide, please. Yeah, in terms of open space provision, the, the, these four slides show uh, uh, the, the details. The top left is again the the, the, the public open space areas. Uh, top right gives an indication of the extent of the private gardens to the properties. Uh, Bottom left is the uh, highway in, within the site, and then the uh, bottom right shows this on the, the hard standings, the vehicle parking areas associated with the proposed dwellings. Next slide, please. Again, it's, again, it's combining sort of the indication of the landscaping, uh, sort of really sort of layering together those images of, from the earlier slides to show the open space in the light green, the darker green for the private garden areas and then the brown showing the uh, roadways in the hard standings. Next slide please. Yeah, in terms of the levels obviously I appreciate this is not legible on, on the screen that but just to give an indication the uh, 
layer to the side is such that there will be some introduction of some sort of low retaining walls within within the development. Those are the solid black lines you can see uh, dividing some of the plots in the uh, garden areas <clears throat> and on the periphery of the site. And also, well, because of the nature of the site, the uh, properties that are on the uh, the uh, southeast, i.e., the sort of the bottom right corner of the view there, which um, front directly onto Ludlow Road, uh, the, the ground levels there would be reduced from their current form because there is presently a retaining wall along that uh, frontage. And in effect, that retaining wall would be uh, a detail that we should end up in terms of regrading where it's being uh, uh, accounted for and need changing levels between the respective rear garden areas of those houses on the other road and those actually within the development off serve off the new road. Next one, please. Uh, again, the, these are drawings just to illustrate the uh, sort of the house type details um, in, a, in terms of the basic form. So if we just perhaps run through an indication of, of, of those, this, these are as a example of a detached property which we sat, sat within the, uh, the, the road uh, frontage. These are a couple of the uh, semi-detached properties again showing these sort of stepping that can occur within the with levels within the site. Uh, the inclusion of the chimney detail on these properties. Uh, these again show another star with the uh, uh, sort of labels facing sort of front and back rather than uh, parallel to the street, adding some variety to the built form and also indicating a sort of mix of um, uh, external facing materials it proposed. Next one, please. And again, this is again a star to show a building that should essentially is a uh, was a single property is actually linked as appearance of sort of loop two linked structures. Next slide, please. And there's uh, some of the sort of ele small elements of sort of three, two, three story accommodation with um, use of the roof space. Next slide, please. Uh, some views here. This is the, the view looking southwest along Ludlow Road. Um, this shows the existing retaining wall along that frontage. The section that we can see immediately closest to us, uh, the close borders fencing encloses the rear sort of garden area to the small building that contains the flats in front of the site. The uh, section up to where we can see a car parked in its nose poking out, that's sort of a part of the open space area to be. Uh, largely retained within this development and the remaining section of retaining wall there that's what would be removed and the levels adjusted there to be uh, more akin to the existing road level for the housing that would have to be constructed and have um would be fronting directly onto this part of the highway next slide please right this is exactly the, the same same wall area that would be um Removed, uh, looking back northwards to the uh, to the small um, sort of two-story building, which is extreme right-hand side of the picture. You can just see the white element there, and shows obviously one of the former ac former access points into the uh, uh, council buildings. And this demonstrates also some of the uh, sort of the, the, the trees which would be removed as part of this development on on, on that particular frontage. Um, those closest up in terms of the uh, dark conifers, the one that's more central, but then those more to the extreme right hand side of the picture would be retained. Next view, please. <clears throat> uh, this is just an indication of the context. These are the properties that are on the opposite side of Ludlow Road to the section where that retaining will be removed. And it's just given an indication of quite a mix of architectural styles a lot along there. Uh, next one, please. And again, that's all really panning from the same position, just turning sort of through 90 degrees. That shows again the uh, properties that are opposite that Ludlow Road uh, frontage. Next view, please. Uh, again, this is the view of that uh, smaller building, which is now two apartments, so set in the fork of the road in front of the uh, former council office buildings, which is not part of the application site. And that would remain, obviously, it is a uh, in, in terms of the scheme flows here. Next view, please. 
and this now is, is the, um, the 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 Tasley Banks side of the site. Uh, this shows essentially the area of open space that would be kept and retained in the development. The uh, building we can see just beyond the tree there, the wall of that's the garage building that would be removed as part of the development. And the trees, the larger trees you can see just about where the two people are walking, those are ones that are on the perimeter of the site and outside the site it would be unaffected. Uh, the tree that we can see in close to by, by, the, by that park, how that would be retained. And it's at this point that the, the access would be introduced to um, serve the development. This again is that view sort of looking down, Tassie Bank, as it's called, to the uh, to the site. And uh, it's, you know, we're, we're opposite, essentially opposite, close to where the police station is at the moment. You now look, looking down, and you know, this is where the reactors will be formed in of this of this bit of part of the road, but also you know, retaining the uh, individual tree specimen we can see there. And next one, if there is. Again, this is just again from the uh, the, the junction that's up for the Westgate Drive, which is opposite the site, uh, showing the sort of the, the principal entrance would again be uh, off this section of the road onto Tasty Bank, uh, where the, the trees we're seeing there would be once retained in this, in the scheme. And next one, in case. Again, this is essentially a view again from the sort of access point into the site, approximately looking down towards the uh, the, the town centre in Bridgenor. It also shows the, the wooded character of the uh, uh, on the opposite side of this part of the road, which essentially is um, obscures the rear garden areas to Westgate Drive properties. And next one. Again, another view from the existing access on to the, the Tassi Bank, looking across the rear of properties as Westgate Drive. Okay, this is just a view within the site, the back of the car park area. That's the, the view. Of the building we can see there is essentially that is the police station building, and uh, which would be uh, Still retain some planting on the boundaries, but this silver birch trees we can see there, and the sleevers would be removed as part of the uh, development. And we can see the back of the uh, former council office buildings. Next view, please. This is just panning round to the houses which are on that um, southwest side of the site, where there's a mix uh, mixture of um, uh, two storey and single storey properties. And next view, please. And this is a, a rear view of the existing dwelling that's on the Ludlow, fake front on the Ludlow Road, which um, would have new housing built to its its left hand side, basically. Uh, that its garden area would remain as shown. So, so as I say, this is a site where clearly it's within the uh, Bridge North um, development boundary. Uh, principal redevelopment is pleased with extent of the committee. Uh, Taking into account the various constraints there are with the development in terms of the site arrangements and boundaries, and seeking to both achieve uh, a development which we have to acknowledge is of a site which will have some abnormal development costs in terms of the demolition of the existing office buildings there, which do have a fairly substantial uh, basement area, which uh, is sort of dates from its sort of Cold War use as an operations room. So there are some sort of normal costs there involved. It does it, it is a relatively high density development, but in the context of the surroundings and the mix of properties it's going to deliver uh, and seeking to retain where we can the you know trees of significance on the site. Um, the option of view is that the scheme that's now been submitted is one that would be acceptable. The um highway matters have been raised by a number of consultees in terms of the uh, access points onto Ludlow Road. Uh, those are matters which our uh, highly consultants are content with uh, looking at the site clearly and what its traffic generation has been in the past and potentially could be where such commercial use to continue and take into account the road conditions and the visibilities. They, they don't envisage there being any unacceptable highway safety issues. What What is um, required is um, to, to have a, a at the moment there are some um, that we have lines around that Road junction where the low, low road joins the uh, 
the Tasney Bank Road uh, traffic regulation order is sought to increase or extend some of the no waiting restrictions there. And there's also uh, conditions in terms of uh, enhancements to the um, pedestrian crossing facilities in the facility as well to uh, obviously again provide um, options to private car travel for a site which effectively is about um, five, five minutes walk from the Bridgenorth Town Centre. The scheme is recommended for approval. Thank you Chair. Thank you Richard, thank you very much. Uh, so let's turn now, have any public speakers on this please? Yes, thank you Chair. Um, firstly, we've got um, a statement from Tony White, a local resident who's speaking against the development. Um, as a local resident whose property is next to Westgate, I do not feel that the issues raised by local residents, interested parties and the Bridge North Town Council have been addressed or answered by the developers for the above planning application. I have lived next to Westgate for over 30 years and like many other local residents, I am concerned regarding the traffic and safety issues raised by the properties which will have direct access onto Ludlow Road. My other main concern is regarding the density of the housing and loss of trees on the proposed new development. Whilst appreciating that the development has to be viable, it should also be in keeping with the surrounding housing. Um, our next chair is um, Bridge North Town Council are also speaking against. Um, who say Bridge North Town Council objects to the current proposal for 31 homes on the Westgate site and asks that the committee refuses this application. Whilst we would welcome an end to the site's current state of dereliction and it's being brought back into productive use, we do not feel that this design fits the location and its surroundings. The main issue is that the layout involves squeezing too much built footprint onto the site. This results in not meeting the open space standards of policy MD2 CS6. Excessive loss of trees, a split non-cohesive development and highways arrangements which are potentially inappropriate for the location and the needs of the development itself. This comment supplements or earlier submission in the light of subsequent information. For many years, the Westgate car park has been available for public parking at weekends when the offices were open all the time subsequently. It was well used, but is no longer available. Since the site was closed off, an existing issue of on-street parking on nearby roads appears to have been exacerbated. Mm. Nearby, there are existing issues with parked vehicles along Conduit Lane, which leads to a primary school and a walking route through to a secondary school and on Victoria Road, which is quite busy as an access route to local housing estates and is on a bus route. These already create congestion and a potential safety hazard. As currently set out, all parking is proposed to be dedicated to individual properties, spaces in front of gardens or garages. An email dated 1st of October about waste vehicle access indicates that the roads are on, sorry, that the roads on the site are 5.5 metres wide about two and a half times the width of a normal car. Any vehicles parked on the carriageway would leave minimum space for others to pass and possibly create an obstruction to refuse to refuse and emergency vehicles. Post condition 15 requires parking, loading, unloading and turning areas to be properly laid out and kept free from impediment. The layout at present doesn't show any visitor parking, loading or turning areas. And in any event, it is difficult to see how it could be monitored long term or enforced. This is a risk of overspill. There is, all, there is a risk of overspill. Um, there are proposed to be 13 separate vehicle accesses from Ludlow Road into parking spaces. None of them are big enough to enable cars to turn around in. So vehicles would be backing onto or off the public highway close to a busy junction. Proposed condition 16 requires a 2.4 metre wide visibility display for a length of 43 metres along Ludlow Road, but it is not clear whether this has been allowed for in the site layout. In any event, it appears to be a compromise required to address a site design issue and presumes long term maintenance and enforcement of a waiting restriction. Overall, we've, we feel that the way to make the development acceptable would be to rethink the, lay the site layout rather than suggest unenforceable conditions to address the design's weaknesses. And finally, Chair, we've got Ian Gilbert, 
um, Barton Wilmore, the agent. Right. Um, thank you, Chair and members. We make these comments on behalf of the applicant, South Staffordshire Housing Association, and further to my letter and visualisation sent to you last week. Firstly, we would like to thank your planning officers for their positive recommendation. We have worked hard with your officers and stakeholders for over two years in developing this scheme through detailed assessment and design work. Officers are clear that the redevelopment of the site is acceptable in principle. The Council has previously resolved to grant planning permission for the residential reuse of its former office site. Indeed, the reuse of sustainable brownfield sites is encouraged at all levels of planning policy. Moreover, the proposals would help the Council meet its housing land requirement in Bridge North, a location for growth, and boost the vitality and viability of the Bridge North Town Centre. We note some local concerns have been raised in relation to highways. However, we have demonstrated that the development will reduce trips onto the highway compared with the previous use of the site. The scheme also benefits from 200% car parking, which is policy, co policy compliant and will avoid any overspill of parking into the surrounding area. In addition, provision has been made for a traffic regulation order to prevent overspill parking from the site or the town centre. Proposed development provides some properties which face onto Ludlow Road. This does, not, this does provide for a more efficient and effective use of the site, which is also in keeping with the character of the rest of Ludlow Road. The majority of properties on Ludlow Road take access directly onto the street, which is quite normal on such a street. Our assessment shows there are no safety concerns in the area or history of accidents. The scheme is supported by your highways officers. The design of the scheme has resulted from detailed discussions with planning officers. The agreed layout has been developed to provide the most efficient use of the site, whilst also providing a density which is appropriate in the context of the site's edge of town centre location. The scheme has been designed with a great deal of care, taken both to individual units and surrounding environment to deliver a truly high quality scheme, as demonstrated by the visualisations provided to you. As set out within your officer's report, the focus of the proposed open space provision is on the quality and usability of the provision rather than amount of space provided. This approach is necessary on a site where delivering a viable scheme has proved difficult. But through care, carefully chosen planting, optimising, optimised for the area and a comprehensive landscaping scheme, it ensures the space will be high value and well used, providing benefits in excess of what is required by policy. The space will also be used to deliver ecological benefits and help encourage biodiversity. We therefore support the conclusions of your planning and technical officers. The beneficial impacts of the proposed development are significant and they should be afforded substantial weight in the consideration of the proposal. We respectfully request that you support the officer's recommendation and grant planning permission for the proposed development. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Chair. Nothing from the local member now. Um, no, that's all we've got on this item. OK, uh, does the planning officer wish to clarify any points? Thank you, Chair. Richard Fortune. And just in terms of the Town Council comments uh, about the number of accesses it's onto Ludlow Road, um, in terms of, I think they reference 13. I think they are counting every individual car parking space. Um, right. The situation is that properties have essentially um, uh, sort of parallel parking for two vehicles outside of the, the uh, outside of them. so essentially they're two vehicle spaces with a single access so the number of accesses matches the number of dwellings it's not that of that number that was mentioned by the town council okay <laughs> right now if you're up to a committee so uh, who would like to speak first um thank you chair i've had an indication from councillor boddington that he would like to speak please councillor boddington please thank you chair I'm not happy with this application. It is an exemplar site. You could not get a better site in Bridge North, or almost a better site in Bridge North to develop. For something that's exemplary, that we'd be proud of, that would be there in the future saying, yeah, we approved that, it was great. This isn't great. It's suffering from the compromise of the site. And what concerns me most about it is the public open space. We're seeing this space, which is barely usable, 
squeezed along the edge of Wenlock Road. Um, and from what I can see, it's got a slope on it, so I'm not going to play football there because it would go straight into the road. It isn't a particularly functional space. And public open space ought to be at the centre of any housing community that we plan for. And it's not, it's at the edge. And I think that makes it a poorly designed development and very difficult. I'm not going to support it for that reason. I'd like, however, to raise a technical point uh, with Richard that the conservation report says there should be recording at level two of during demolition of the building because this building, like many in Shropshire, many around the country, has potential uh, Cold War historic potential, uh, records potential, and we shouldn't ignore our 20th century history because when it's gone, it's gone, usual thing. And this is a recording thing, it's not a preservation thing. And I don't see in the conditions that we have level two recording conditioned. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, next to indicate to speak is um, Councillor Parsons, please. Tony Parsons, please. Uh, uh, Councillor Tony Parsons. Yeah, I think that uh, this site is a good site in terms of accommodation uh, for the town. It's very close to the uh, the centre of Bridge North. But I share a lot of the concerns of Bridge North Town Council, uh, in particular with regard to the the density of build here and the impact of that on both the uh, public open space and also the trees, which uh, I'm very concerned about those trees on the Ludlow Road being uh, taken down as far as that line of housing that runs along there is. Being less, maybe 25 houses or something like that, rather than the 31 that are being proposed here. So I don't think I'll be able to uh, support this application for those reasons. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Um, Councillor Shyington. Councillor Mad Shyington, please. Thank you, Chair. Shyington from the Clibbury Mortimer Division. Um, yes, I think this is an overcrowded site. I'm very disappointed to see uh, um, the old Bristol District Council site being uh, crowded in like this. Uh, I certainly agree with where the um, community area is. Why on earth would you have it on that corner? I can't think of a more unfriendly area to have it. I absolutely agree with the arboriculturist's comments and he's got a long list of comments there. And for me, I, I can't believe that uh, we have required those many comments and uh, corrections, uh, alternative ideas, whatever you want to call them. The underground room, um, we had an interesting one in Clibbury with the, the Muller's um, company when they sold their site off. And of course, they had an underground room where they used to test the guns and everything during the war. Um, that's where the medical centre is now. So the medical centre's uh, done OK on it. So, But it did cost a lot of extra money uh, for the developer to actually uh, produce uh, an area where it could be built on. And the travel plan, um, I would be expecting to see buses of all sorts going, whether it's going on the Ludlow or whether it's going on the Much Wenlock uh, Road, uh, to facilitate uh, activity from people who live on that site. No, I'm not very happy with it. Too overcrowded. I don't think I can support it. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Um, Councillor Woodward. Yes, Tina Woodward, please. Thank you, Chairman. Tina Woodward, Alvaline Claverley Division. I agree with fellow councillors. The density on site appears to be in conflict with the amount of open space and the effective landscaping on site. The housing gives a very blocky presence as well. And, and those who know Bridge North well know there are actually sight lines through properties. In other words, you have high housing, low housing and a good mix. These are very blocky in my opinion. Therefore, it's the density and the accumulation of that density of the buildings. They, they, they just look 
overpowering the site in my opinion. The actual montage shows a lovely green environment with trees being added and planted and also lawns at the front and hedging, which is welcome on, welcomed on any scheme. But to me, you know, how are we going to keep that green when the trees proposed, even our own trees team are looking at thinking, well, you know, some of them will have to be cut back in the future. So I'm deeply disappointed with what's been brought forward for this site because it is such an integral part and it's it's where you come into the town itself. And I, this is not what I expect to see. And I think we can do better, Chairman. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Um, Councillor Motley. Councillor Motley, please. Yeah, sorry if this is sounding like rather a chorus, Chairman, but I have to say that when I saw these, when I saw these these uh, uh, designs, I thought, oh no, this is the most unimaginative treatment of this site, and it is. It, uh, yes, obviously it's a difficult site because uh, because of the gradient. But actually, this is a terribly uh, almost sort of 80s style design. And in this day and age, I can't help feeling that we can come up with something which is uh, much less uniform um, and doesn't just have serried ranks of houses uh, uh, it, with, with, with a T. With a um, uh, road going through. Also, I'm not at all happy with the parking arrangements for those uh, for those houses out onto the Ludlow Road. I don't think that's that's good, and I don't like the way that cuts off the site. Um, it, you, th th this site has an extraordinary lack of coherence to it, which is a great shame. I think this is a seriously missed opportunity, and I appreciate that the demolition of the DRL Westgate is not going to be cheap, but I just do not like what is being proposed here because I think, as others have said, uh, it shows a serious lack of imagination. It's removing far too much of the existing greenery, which which is really needed to soften that site. And I think it needs to go back for another for another try, I'm afraid. OK. Next speaker, please. Um. That's all I've got indication for at the moment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, um, sorry, Simon Harris has indicated Thank that you. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to uh, reiterate uh, um, what everybody else has said. Um, and I think that C Celia Motley put it quite well. That right hand side bank of houses pulling out onto that particular main road is not the brightest idea in the whole wide world. That is an accident waiting to happen. Uh, the traffic comes up. You, you accelerate up that bank, not a um, not decelerate. Um, I can't accept that any of those houses are on the right hand side. It it is a missed opportunity. I do agree, and it is extremely uh, um, overbuilt. Um, although this is the only the first application for the site, you can see uh, if the developers take on our comments, all well and good. Um, two two good entrances would have been uh, ideal two entrances into the site, but um, let, let's see how we get on for the future. OK, thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Turner, please, Chair. Councillor David Turner, please. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. David Turner, much when knock. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to say what everyone else has said. I'm, I'm, I'm very much in agreement. Just looking at this layout, it just crossed my mind um, that most of the well, all of the houses a bit have two car parking spaces. Um, the I just wonder what happens when they get visitors and delivery drivers and all the rest of it. It just strikes me that it's going to be it's going to be a it's going to be clogged up very 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 quickly. Yes, send send it back and um, have another try is my response. Thank you. Right, no other speakers. Uh, no further indications to speak, Chair. Does the planning officer want to come back with any points or? Yes, Chair, it's Richard Fortune, Principal Planner. Um, in terms of the comments that made by, by Chris, just, just a number I pick up on. The, uh, the issue of the open space area that's on the, of the development, if I tell you, the, that was much governed in the thinking by officers in discussions with the applicants over A, the retention of 
existing trees are significant, but also in maintaining this green corridor that there is in terms of the approach to the town down the Tassie Bank. Because we, in this snapshot here, we, we can see, and as the photographs show, there is greenery on the opposite side of the road. It, it continues up the bank to, to, to the um, to um, further along Wenlock Road and sort of so, so it was really seen as a way of actually maintaining that strong presence. It's acknowledged that in doing so, and in terms of just uh, delivering a, a site that's viable for development, that meant there had to be some compromises on trees, and that's why that compromise, in a sense, was on Ludlow Road frontage, uh, which uh, is, is a reason for that arrangement. Uh, the issue with the levels is is due to the uh, again the uh, situation with it being elevated in relation to Ludlow Road and clearly take on the points that members have made uh, but there's also then the issue of how you achieve development that doesn't end up with development actually uh, backing out onto those spaces and trying to get to create active frontages onto those two sort of primary routes into the site so that it does. That is some, or well, some of the factors that have sort of led to this arrangement. The, the carriageway width within the site meets the um, usual standard requirements for where you have situations of you no know, goods vehicles and private cars passing. The on-site parking provision, we at Shropshire Council do not have adopted parking standards, but two spaces on-site for each property is is the norm. And the uh, situation with the uh, on-road arrangements for parking, it would be not normal practice, it would be seeking to even further areas of the site and devoted to vehicle parking where this is one a location where we ought to also be sort of seeking to recognise its proximity to the town centre and the uh, services within uh, walking distance of it. I, I, with regard to the access points into the site, I think a factor which I have to acknowledge is that originally this site was going to be a joint development with the land that is currently occupied by the police station and that because of the police authority changing their lines over recent years that's why that's been excluded now from this scheme and it's led to the arrangement we have here so uh, no I, I can acknowledge the concerns that the members have raised but there are some I would suggest officers see some constraints in relation to these site contexts the relationship of buildings around it which do somewhat fetter the extent to which we can uh, adopt um, different approaches on this land. Uh, obviously, if members are <coughs> um, not content with the scheme, then we would need some uh, further uh, uh, explanation and justification for that in, uh, in, in you know, if, if that's going to be moved here as a refusal reason. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Do you want to clarify anything or Kim? Do you want to clarify anything? Um, no, nothing further to clarify to what Richard has said. Um, Councillor Boddington's um, indicated that you'd like to speak, Chair. OK. Thank you, Councillor Boddington. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to propose that this committee refuses this scheme as designed. We appreciate the need to develop this site, and it's an important site, and we need to get the design right. The current scheme does not represent sustainable development and doesn't seek to create the community environment that we would expect for a modern scheme of this type. Thank you. Thank you. That's a proposal. Is there a second of that? Please. I'll second, Chair. Councillor Cecilia Motley, Corvdale Division. Right. Well, I'd like to make an amendment to that, please. If I could, I'd like to defer the application so the planners can go back and come back with a better design and a better layout of this site completely to what we've got before us. So I don't know if there's a seconder for that at all. Chair, I, I, I would Chair. like to second that. Yeah, and me. Chair, I would defer to deferral and uh, withdraw my motion in favour of yours. OK. Councillor Motley, do you wish to defer her? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to uh, bow before you, Chairman. As ever. Right, so we get a proposal by myself and the second there was by Councillor China, was it seconding that? I think uh, it was well, I certainly wanted to second it, but I thought there was somebody else seconding. Yes, I, 
at the same I'm time. Second, oh, I think Robertson will second it. Council will second it. Right. So proposed and seconded that we uh, go for a deferral on the site so we come back with a better layout and better design of houses uh, for the future. So is that acceptable, Richard? Yes, Jack. Yes, that's fine. OK, so could I ask the solicitor to take the vote, please? On the on the amendment. Um, thank you, Chair. So on the proposal for deferral for a better design and better layout, if I could um, just remind you again that you can members can only vote who are present for the whole item. Um, I'll just run through the names now, and if you could indicate whether you're for or against that proposal to defer the application. Councillor Evans. For. Councillor Turner. For. Councillor Boddington. For. Councillor Harris. For. Councillor Hignett. For. Councillor Huffer. For. Councillor Motley. For. Councillor Parsons. For. Councillor Shankton. For. Councillor Tyndall. For. And Councillor Woodward. For. That's unanimous, Chair. That's unanimous. Thank you very much for the committee for that. Very much appreciated. Right, we go on to item number eight now, which is land adjacent to Roundhouse, Ben Green, Alvley, and I believe it's going to be presented by Tim Rogers. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, sorry. Did somebody speak? Tim? No. Yeah, you, I was Chair. just going to say uh, several members have requested, could they have a comfort break? Right, yes, we'll have a comfort break for five minutes. Yes. So okay. it's now eight minutes Five past minutes. four. If we come back at quarter past four, seven minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Can I just re remind members that the meeting will remain live? So okay. they can remain okay. muted.
OK, everybody, we're now back. I now ask Tim Rogers to present the case for the round of Ben Green, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes, this is um, a, a retrospective planning application relating to land adjacent to the roundhouse at Fen Green, Alderley, and it's for use of land as a traveller's caravan site comprising three caravans. Um, if I could just, before I take you through a few slides, could I just uh, draw members' attention to the late representation sheet? Uh, on which you will see uh, that there are there's a summary of points raised in five letters of support of uh, of the application and also a letter from the agent for the application. Um, I'll take you through the slides first of all. So if we could move on to the, the first slide, please. Uh, that's basically showing the, the the site outlined in red you'll see that it's sited between two highways, uh, one being an A road that runs to the uh, to the east of the property uh, and a smaller lane to the west of the property off which access is gained into the site. If we could move to the next slide, please. So this that this slide shows the uh, the layout of the site as it's currently occupied. Um, you'll see the axis there on the the eastern well eastern side as you look at that plan uh, of, of of the of the road front the lane frontage uh, and an area of uh, a, a driveway and an area of hard standing in the western part of the site that accommodates. Uh, a mobile home and two touring caravans. Um, I do apologise when, when I run through these photos, there aren't any photographs inside of the actual site, but I don't think necessarily that that um, is, is, is a big uh, um, obstacle to you, you making your decision today. I'll, we'll take, I'll take you through uh, photographs that are taken around the, the outside of the site. We could move on to the next slide but one please that that slide is incorrectly labeled so I, I and is duplicated i think so we could move to the next slide okay so um that that is as it says at the top um, a view of the site looking north from the a road which runs to the eastern side of the site as you will see it is um screened quite well screened from that highway in the center right in the center the darker green of shrubbery is the uh, is the conifer hedge that you will see referred to in the officer report. Um, could we move on to the next slide, please? That's looking in the opposite direction down the A road with uh, the the building in the, in in the uh, the far distance is the roundhouse, uh, and again you will see the the coniferous. Uh, hedge road to the to the A road. If we could move on, please, to the next slide. So what this shows is the um, the, the roundhouse in the foreground. In this instance, uh, the lane that runs off the off the A road and along the western part of the site, and the entrance to the site is further down is past those um, ballards on your right hand side. Uh, next slide, please. That just shows the break in in uh, the hedgerow. That's obviously not a coniferous hedgerow to the lane. It's a it's a better, uh, more natural hedgerow, and that's the entrance into the site. We could go to the next slide, please. That's the one, the, the slide that was duplicated, and that's looking um, down the lane in the opposite direction with the entrance on the on the left. So again, looking down the lane towards the roundhouse. Um, I yeah, next slide, please. Those are the properties that uh, are on the opposite side of the lane from the uh, the application site. Next slide, please. And again, that's looking towards that's looking with the the, the site on the left hand side, uh, the hedgerow, the lane running away from the A road, mm -hmm. and you'll see the properties 
on the opposite side of the road that I've just referred to. Is that the last slide? Oh, sorry, that's the, the, this is the property that is situated immediately to the northwest of, of the site along the lane. So the access to this property is, uh, it, it is immediately um, to the north of the of the application site and the access uh, and the, the application site off the lane. Um, OK. Um, as you will see from the report, the application site um, has quite a, a long and complicated planning history. Um, the uh, application, an application for the use that's currently taking place was submitted as far back as 2011. Uh, and I don't intend to repeat it, but the, the kind of the timeline of, of events is set out in the in the officer report that you you have before you as to how we've it's taken this long to get to a, a, a point of a, of a further decision. Um, you will the report. Sorry, I just need to. Get the. Uh, So the report sets sets that the, what the, exactly what the proposal is, and as I say, that's that's basically a retrospective application. So it's not 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 intense intent no intention to intensify the existing use, but currently, as as, as is clear, the the the, use, the current uses are unauthorized. Um, if I then take you through the report. Um, You've seen you've seen the uh, the area around around the site and, and where it's situated. Um, it's not in an in a, a settlement identified for any development and as such for the purposes of the local plan is in open countryside. Um, but you will see that there is some settlement immediately. Uh, uh, sorry, some uh, development immediately adjo adjoining the, um, the application site. At section three of the report, you will note that the, um, uh, the parish council have submitted a, uh, a view that's contrary to the recommendation for refusal. Uh, they, they are supporting the application uh, subject to um, uh, there being no issues around um, contamination. And I'll come on to, on to that again uh, in a short while. Um, Sorry, did I, I referred that wrongly, didn't I? The section four that the parish council have made their, their comments. Um, there are also a number within the report, a number of uh, consultee responses, uh, which uh, none of which um, express any uh, clear opposition to the proposal. They do, however, suggest that some uh, conditions uh, would be appropriate in the event that planning permission were to be granted. Uh, and that would uh, be uh, that would be true in terms of um, uh, contaminate further contamination in investigation and possible remediation, and also um, uh, potential improvements to the access uh, and the sight lines at the access for highway purposes. Um, you will also see at 4.2 of the report, uh, there have been a number of uh, objections, nine objections received to the planning application and the reasons given uh, for, for those objections. That's set out at, as I say, section, uh, paragraph 4.2 of the report. So ultimately, the um, section six of the report is the officer appraisal and um, despite the long and complicated planning history of the site the, the the judgment to be made here is one really of the planning balance uh, and how much weight you give to a number of kind of competing factors if you like uh, one of those is the uh, uh, the circumstances of the applicant uh, you will and you will have seen from the late representation sheet that a number of people are supporting their 
uh, use of of this site and and uh, are supportive of the fact that they have uh, really integrated into the local community and become la part of the local community over the um, the nine years that they've they've uh, been occupying the site. Um, the second thing that needs to be taken into consideration is clearly uh, uh, planning policy uh, in relation to both the green belt uh, and um, the development plan, both of which um, wouldn't support uh, development of, on this site unless there were considered to be sufficient justification in terms of exceptional circumstances to to grant permission. Um, and you will see that the report sets out in some detail the the balance that officers have come to in assessing uh, those uh, considerations. Um, but and, uh, it's acknowledged that um, you know uh, members may may give different weight to each of those considerations and indeed may give may give different weight to consideration of the third uh, main consideration which is the impact on the the uh, character openness and character of the of the green belt um, it is a it is a, a planning balance, as I say. Uh, officers have come to the conclusion that we don't, on balance, consider that there are sufficient uh, justification, or there is sufficient justification in this instance to support uh, the use of this site for um, a, 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 a gypsy site for, for three caravans. Um, but as I say, members will need to consider the weight that we as officers have given to each of the of the matters uh, as set out in the report and decide whether they support that proposal, the, the, the proposed recommendation or not. Um, the, uh, the, the, the one one thing I would say um, in respect of the late submissions and, th and a point that has been raised by um, other people in relation to this site is that the, there are adjoining this site um, there are there is development that has been approved uh, that is in the form of uh, single plot affordable dwellings uh, and that has been cited as justification for allowing um, the proposal here uh, for its use as a gypsy site um, Strictly speaking, you don't have the, the, the same considerations for a single plot affordable dwelling. Obviously, so in order to uh, meet the requirements of the policy for a single plot affordable dwelling, someone has to demonstrate local connection. Um, but what over, over and above that, the, the assessment that has to be made is not one for a single plot affordable dwelling, is not one about sustainability. It's about whether the proposed site is uh, within or adjacent to a, uh, a named settlement. That's what the policy requires. Um, this, this isn't um, an affordable housing proposal, so you've got to consider whether or not um, it, it can or should sit with policy. And so if members were minded to support the application uh, in order to um, um, justify that along along with a number of other conditions it would be necessary in our opinion to impose a condition that the the site is only occupied by uh, the, the the applicants and their uh, immediate descendants uh, and that the site should uh, revert back to um, a, an open site uh, should that no longer be required um, as I say, the officer recommendation is one that on balance that we do not believe there is sufficient ju justification to allow uh, the, um, the development and the use proposed. Um, I would also have to say that if, of course, members agree with that uh, and the recommendation to refuse for the reasons set out at the head of the report, 
uh, it is um, uh, given that the proposal is retrospective, it is likely to then necessitate um, enforcement action to uh, ensure that the, uh, the site is vacated if that isn't voluntarily done so following the decision. Um, I think, Chair, that's all I intend to say at this point. I um, but happy, obviously, to try and answer any questions that members may have. And I would just draw your attention to the two reasons for refusal as set out at the head of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Kim, have you any uh, public speaking statements on this, please? It's been sent in, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, the first public speaker um, is Councillor Tina Woodward, local member, and she's requested that she reads her own statement. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Councillor Woodward, if you'd like to go ahead with that, please. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, thank you for allowing me to speak to this application. As the committee will have read in the case officer's report, the planning history on the site is very complex. Due to the refusals and subsequent appeals and challenges via the legal system, this is taken from its initial planning refusal on the 21st of June 2011 to this current application now before the committee for determination. As a local member, I have found it somewhat challenging to find a clear path forward in reaching a view on this particular application. The site lies within the green belt and this council has highlighted the inappropriateness of this site in its previous refusals, as have I as the local council member. As this is a retrospective application, Shropshire Council's regulatory services have raised concerns with remaining regarding contaminated land as given at 4.1.4 relating to the prior planning applications refusals. The concerns relate to prior ground investigations on site which indicated and identified asbestos fibres in near, near surface soil. Regulatory services have suggested conditions. The weight of the planning history for this site cannot be cast aside easily and neither can our own Shropshire Council policy. However, I do have sympathy for the families now on site as the Roberts family have clearly been living on the site which they purchased and subsequently moved on to over nine years ago. There are now two families with children under school age and a grandparent three generations on site. Should the committee be minded to not support the officer's recommendation, then I would request a comprehensive list of conditions be applied due to the location of the site, which is on one of the main entrance points to Arvely Village. Regulatory service conditions to be applied as given on page 111 of the officer's report. I would appreciate the following conditions, um, additional concerns be addressed with conditions. Landscaping, the Lalandi hedge be removed and replaced with appro appropriate native hedging along the boundary with the A442, including evergreen species such as holly to be agreed with the trees team. Any removal of hedges for visibility displays to be replaced with native hedging and also evergreen species. Conditions to limit any commercial activity on site, including size of commercial vehicles, no commercial storage, including materials. And if I could add chairman, obviously um, Tim Rogers actually suggested conditions limiting it to the family use only, and I would support that. Thank you chairman, that's my statement and I will now mute my microphone and my camera. Thank you, Councillor Winwood. Any more speakers, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, we've also got a statement from Dr Angus Murdoch, um, the agent, and he states, when I read the officer's report, sorry, when I read the officer's report, state that there are no overwhelming personal circumstances or any other compelling evidence to support the application, I thought I must be looking at a different case because the Reverend Dunlop, Rector of St Mary's, writes, I support the Roberts family being allowed to stay. 
I had the honour of conducting the funeral of Mr Roberts, who is buried in our churchyard, a privilege only allowed to those who have a qualifying connection to the parish. Mrs Roberts' grandchild was recently baptised here, which again is only allowed if you have a connection to the parish. The Roberts family have been incredibly kind to the church over the past couple of years. In a voluntary capacity, Mrs Roberts has cared for and cut the church graveyard at a cost of her time and her fuel. They make an incredible commitment to both the church and the village and are respected and loved by many. Tragically, Mr Roberts passed away very suddenly at just 48 years of age in 2018, leaving a young widow behind him. As Pauline Smith, owner of the Royal Oak writes, we have found them to be very quiet and extremely pleasant, but most of all very honest and trustworthy. It would be quite heartless for this wonderful little family to be left homeless. This lady has had more than enough tragedy. Immediate neighbours, Mr and Mrs Turner write, we have enjoyed having them in the village. To prove her kindness whilst on lockdown, Sharon Roberts kindly delivered food and essentials. We would really like to see them have a permanent home in Alfley, as in our eyes, they are now part of our community. Parish Council also supports this application because the family have shown themselves to be good neighbours in the decades that they have been living in the village. Clearly, the proposal meets CS12 as a small exception site in accordance with policy CS5, as a strong local connection is demonstrated. CS5 is met because this proposal provides accommodation to meet a local need in accordance with CS12. The officer's report fails to refer to the adjacent site, also in the Greenbelt, where permission was granted for an affordable dwelling, 18-03970 full, on the grounds of a strong local connection and personal circumstances, both of which apply in Mrs Roberts's case with even greater force. Moreover, as the adjacent site was found to be in a sustainable location, so too must this. Indeed, both formed part of the same land holding originally. There are three children under five for whom the application site is their only home. The eldest starts nursery in January and has her name down for Alverley Primary School. Paragraph 16 of planning policy for traveller sites states, subject to the best interests of the child, personal circumstances and unmet need are unlikely to clearly outweigh harm to the green belt and any other harm so as to establish very special circumstances. Those circumstances, together with the unmet need for 113 additional pitches in the 2020 Gypsy and Traveller Accommodation Assessment, and the family's personal circumstances, combined with the officer's conclusion that there are no alternative pitches to accommodate this family, to amount to the very special circumstances that justify planning permission in this case. Um, and that's um, that's all the statements on this matter. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Does the plan officer wish to come back on anything? Not at this stage, thank you, Chair. OK, right, I now invite the members to speak. Um, so. OK, Chair, we've had indication from Councillor Boddington that you'd like to speak, please. Councillor Boddington, please. Thank you, Chair. This is a difficult application in that it's in the green belt. Anywhere but the green belt, we just say yes, I think. But we need to protect the green belt. It's really very important. So I looked at the most important test in my mind, which is the openness of the green belt. I cannot see that this detracts from the openness of the green belt. It is amongst an area of housing, of housing to be built. That housing being built doesn't set a precedent, but it does reduce openness. And this is a small settlement with people who are now well established. They're in a community. We know policy wise that we have substantial difficulty across the county and indeed across the country in getting suitable settled settlements for the traveling community. This one clearly works. There are a lot of uh, settlements that actually don't work and this one works so I am really uh, minded to approve this and, and say we should approve it. Councillor Tina Woodward put forward a set of very reasonable conditions on it and um, 
I think we should do that along with uh, Tim's condition that it is conditioned to be the occupants and their descendants and doesn't become a general use traveller site. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Um, Councillor Parsons, Joe. Yes, Parsons, please. Yeah, Councillor Tony Parsons. Uh, this uh, uh, Tim didn't go through the uh, the history of this particular application, but the reading of it is almost like uh, half of the Encyclopaedia Britannica. It's been going on for <coughs> that long. When I, if I ever hear the Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government pointing the finger at local authorities and saying we don't deal with matters quickly enough then this is an example of how long it's taken them to deal with it. This has been with the Secretary of State since 2013, seven years, in which, during which point the original applicant is now deceased. This has just gone on for far too long. I, I believe that this application should be accepted. I also agree that we do need to have the conditions that have been proposed by both Councillor Tina Woodward and by Tim Rogers, but the the situation here has changed quite dramatically in that Alvley Parish Council was originally opposing this application, but are now supporting it. And similarly, the re local residents in the area are also largely in support of this application for these particular residents who have now been settled in Alverley for nine, ten years. And so I, I won't support uh, the refusal. I, I would want to see this application accepted with the conditions that have been proposed. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, Councillor Motley, please, Chair. Councillor Cecilia Motley, please. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Chair. Councillor Cecilia Motley, Corvedale. Um, yeah. The green belt, I agree with with Councillor Boddington. The green belt is always tricky, but I think what we've got to bear in mind in this particular case is that we're not talking about a sudden incursion into the green belt in any way, shape or form. We're talking here about a family who are clearly in need, who actually have been living on this site for the last nine years. So it's not as if the green belt has suddenly been assaulted by uh, um, a, 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 a sudden and unwanted development. Um, I'm slightly concerned about the fact that there is contaminated land on the site, particularly bearing in mind that this is a site that has got young children on it. And I do think that something has got to be done about that. But I think that we do have to, from time to time, have a little compassion in planning. I do think that the applicant's circumstances, the fact that they're integrated and welcomed by the community, the fact that there are young children who need uh, a routine and need to be able to go to school, are, uh, are circumstances which we need to take quite seriously in this case. Um, and it is a tricky one because nobody likes uh, changing the rules over Greenbelt. And we are normally very much inclined to uh, to to guard our green Greenbelt very, very carefully. But I do take the point which uh, Andy Boddington made, which is this is not exactly open Greenbelt. This is really quite clearly enclosed. This, this patch of land, it's enclosed seriously between two roads. So it's not as if this is an incursion into the open countryside. Um, and I think taking all those things into consideration, including the very sensible suggestions by um, the division councillor, Councillor Woodward, in terms of conditions, um, and particularly, I would applaud her suggestion that this is for family use only and that there should not be uh, an introduction of commercial ve vehicles or commercial storage onto the site. I think this is this is an application that we should be supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. I have no further indications to speak, Chair. No one else. Um, no one else has indicated, no. Right, okay. Uh, I requested to speak, Chair. 
Tim, so Tim there are a few. Oh, few sorry, chat. Yeah. Sorry, chair. My um, my screen didn't move up, so I've, okay. just, I've just moved it now. Um, sorry, Councillor Harris. Um, yeah. Um, thank you, chair. Uh, one of the things, of course, is this may be green belt land, but for those of us who've lived around here for a while, the roundhouse wasn't known as a roundhouse. That was actually a garage, and you can understand why there's a little contamination in the land. Um, uh, we have had various properties like that dotted around Shropshire or for hundreds of years and nobody's ever become um it's never become harmful to anybody um it has actually when you look at it Tim Rogers talked about it being in a cluster well it is in a cluster that's it's quite a heavy cluster as well because don't forget just up the road from there is the nursing home which used to actually be a cinema and a nightclub so um it doesn't get much clustery than that um <laughs> and I, I find it difficult that people don't don't remember where they live um or is it just me that's been around here a while i don't know um as for everything else i do agree with everybody um on all of their points and just one final point that i'd like to make this is not the first time something like this has come up is it if you remember when we went over to or Brighton to have a look at our, um, some council, ex-council land where they uh, uh, put caravans on. And as we walked through the gate, you realise that how well kept it is, how well integrated the families were in All Brighton. Um, and I think this is just a copy of it um, where, where the families had been beneficial to the community. And I think this is where we're at now. We made the right decision at All Brighton, and I think we should be making the right decision at Alverley. And I think that uh, if nobody has proposed it yet, I will propose that we um, um, accept this application. Thank you, Councillor Thank Harris. you. you Councillor Ignit wanted to come in. Uh, Councillor Shinton's next, Chair. Councillor Shinton. Sorry, I switched myself off because uh, there really isn't anything else to say except that I agree with it, what everybody said. Okay. Certainly the limitation of any further development, I think we need to be quite tight, tight on that. But uh, let's have a degree of compassion here, shall we? Thank you. OK, Chair and Councillor Hignett. Uh, thank you, Chair. Councillor Hignett, Ray Valley Ward. Um, there are two points I just wanted to make because I know we've talked quite a lot about this. Uh, any application for anything on green belt land, uh, if we're going to approve it, it, it has to be proved uh, that there are uh, reasons that completely outweigh the fact that this is may, maybe going to do harm some uh, some harm to the uh, green belt. And I think in this circumstance, there are, there are clear indications from what I've heard and from what I've read in the report uh, that there are special considerations here that that we should take into account. The second thing that I think we need to take uh, quite a bit of weight on is the opinion of the parish council. And uh, as has been stated already, they've changed their minds on this and, and they're fully in favour of it. And I do think that we need to, as a, as a planning committee, take take a lot of notice of what the local parish council say. They're the ones uh, actually on the on the street, actually on the on the ground. They know exactly what's going on in their area. They support this and uh, and I will be supporting it as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Ignit. OK, Chair, can um, Tim Rogers speak, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, just um, I can see obviously where this potentially is, is headed. Um, and so what I was going to ask, Chair, is that if there is a, a, a vote to approve the application, that um, as part of that, you do delegate to officers or to, to myself the uh, the imposition of conditions. And I can run through a, a list of uh, conditions, not, not the exact wording, but what those conditions would cover, but it might not be an exhaustive list. There may be other things that we need to cover, but I'm happy to do that, Chair, if that would, if that would assist. That, that would help, yes. Uh, okay, so. One, one would be that the um, the approval would be personal to the occupants and their descendants. Uh, secondly, that uh, all caravans and, and structures and associated materials were removed if that was no longer 
if they're no longer required by the applicants or descendants in accordance with condition one, uh, that if if the those structures were uh, removed as part of condition of uh, the second condition I've referred to, then the land should be restored to uh, its original condition. Um, a condition which would limit the number of caravans on the site to a maximum of three. That there should be no commercial activity taking plant place on the land other than the, the parking of uh, uh, vehicles which might be used commercially off site. And uh, also that there should be a landscaping scheme approved to uh, for the site which primarily would focus on replacing the Leylanda, inappropriate Leylandi hedging to the uh, main A road and that planting takes place in, in, to an agreed timetable and is maintained. Uh, a condition stating that the caravan should be sited only in the position shown on the submitted plan. A condition requiring that any scheme for lighting should be approved and of course Two that were I uh, I mentioned during my presentation. One that there needs to be a further uh, contamination report and remediation should contamination be uh, discovered. Uh, and and finally, conditions requiring um, uh, an assessment over the uh, provision of visibility space to improve visibility uh, from the access. Um, I think, Chair, that's that's. The list as I've got it at the moment, but as I say, I would ask that uh, delegated authority be given to officers uh, to uh, flush out the exact wording of those conditions and any other conditions that are considered appropriate. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, fine, yeah. Um, do you want to come back, Kim, with anything to clarify anything? Uh, no, I think Tim said it all. We just need to yeah. um, get the, um, the proposal. Um, I can't remember who proposed it now. Hang on a second. Yeah. Um, Simon Harris, whether he um, wants to put his proposal forward with that recommendation that with the delegation to officers to um, impose the relevant conditions. Yeah, I think that is what Tim has just said is is absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, I think that that clears up all the relevant issues that pretty well everybody has talked about. OK. Good. Are you happy to pro propose with those conditions and with that delegation, Councillor Harris? Yes. OK, and then um, Councillor Boddington has indicated he'd like to speak, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to uh, second that with the conditions as Tim Rogers has outlined. Thank you. OK, that's good. Um, yes, uh, travellers have to live somewhere. I have a size in Craven Arms. We've got uh, 17 pitches in Craven Arms. So, um, yes, and it becomes difficult sometimes for these people knowing where to live and where to go. So, uh, I would support this application. So, we have a proposal in the seconder for the application to be um, permitted uh, with the conditions and delegated to, count to Tim Rogers as the officer. So, all those in favour, please, of the proposal. OK, thank you, Chair. Um, so as the Chair just mentioned, if you could please indicate whether you're for or against the proposal. Um, and can I just remind members that only those members that were present for the whole of the matter can vote. So if we start with um, Councillor Evans. For. Councillor Turner. For. Councillor Boddington. For. Councillor Harris. For. Councillor Hignett. Four. Councillor Huffer. Four. Councillor Motley. Four. Councillor Parsons. Four. Councillor Shankton. Four. And Councillor Tyndall. Four. OK, that's unanimous, Chair. That's carried, that's unanimous. Thank you very much, Committee. We now move on to item nine, which is seven Manor Crest Forward Shrewsbury. Yes, thank you, Chair. Richard Fortune, Principal Planner. Thank you, uh, Richard. Uh, this application is on committee because the applicant is a member of staff uh, reporting to planning services, so um, our constitution requires it to be determined by committee. Um, we can press move to the slide to see the proposal is a 
single story rear extension. This this is indicates the location of the property within the uh, this particular uh, residential development. Uh, move on to the next slide, please. Uh, again, detached property. The uh, the works in question are essentially, if we look at this view, the, the top edge of the property the, along the side of the building there, and then the extension to the rear, which would replace an existing conservatory. There's also some works to the front of the building in terms of uh, adapting a garage area into living accommodation and some adjustment to the drive area to um, create a, a leveler and slightly wider drive. Next view, please. Uh, this is a property as existing. It shows the conservatory to be removed and also so, some small sheds at the side of the building, which should also be removed. Next view, please. Uh, in terms of the for footprints, we can see on the ground floor, uh, the left hand view is the ground floor plan, it shows the conservatory at present. And uh, essentially, you know, the accommodation we got, it, it also shows the um, existing sort of integral garage area, which the actual conversion and reuse of that is additional living accommodation, additional room in itself. Uh, it's not something that would necessarily need planning permission, but it's in the conservation area because of the uh, works that there are to the, to the front of the, of the building, then, then that can sometimes mean that does come into some element of planning control. Next view, please. Again, a side view showing the small sheds being removed and the conservatory. Next view, please. Uh, again, third of view showing the conservatory to be removed. Next one, please. In terms of the uh, existing front view, this shows the integral garage area. Next view, please. And in terms of this, is it rear elevation shows the uh, single story extension that replaced the conservatory, uh, which uh, obviously projects for rear elevation. And then the actual roof slope continues along the side of the building to provide a sort of covered storage area. You have the next view. Yes, in terms of the footprint, the dark shading shows the uh, rear extension and then to the bottom of the screen we have the uh, sort of continuation of the roof along that side which will also cover a new sort of Inglenook power face element and then top right you can just see the uh, window arrangement to replace the garage door. Next view please. Uh, this is the view along the, the side north side of the building which shows the Inglenook is the uh, so you can see that the flue leading up from that is the uh, sort of the box area to the, to the right hand side. There's then sort of covered open storage area with the roof running along and then linking into the you say roof plane to the rear extension. Next view, please. Again, a view of the uh, south elevation of the proposed extension. And next one, please. And the front elevation view here shows the window that's replacing the garage door and an indication at the right left hand side of that image is just the side view you would have that uh, sort of monopitch extension along the north elevation and we can see because of the removal of the garage door it gives the opportunity for a lowering of the uh, levels at the front to create a less steep drive area uh, but still maintain parking for two vehicles. Next view please. And that's that's it, I think. Uh, as I say, it's a location that's modern house within a conservation area. Uh, no objections from any parties. There can be no implications at all for neighbour amenity in this additions. The, the alteration of the adjustments are just to be in keeping with the building and not to cause any harm to the conservation area. Uh, is there a full scheme that's recommended for approval? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Richard. <coughs> Have any speakers, please, Kim? Uh, there's no speakers on this one, Chair. OK. So let's do the project. Right, we can open up a committee for you for a debate. Who OK, like I've got an indication from Councillor Turner. We'd like to speak, please. Councillor Turner. Thank you, Chair. David Turner, much Wenlock. Um, thank you very much to the planning officer, the principal planner, for his um, um, explanation of this. Um, uh, very helpful. Um, and on that basis, I'd be happy to propose um, the recommendation. Thank you very much, Councillor Turner. Next speaker, please. 
I would be happy to second. Thank you, Councillor Tindall. Anyone else? Um, uh, Councillor Motley would like to speak, please. Councillor Motley. Yeah, actually, um, Councillor Tindall nipped in in front of me. I was going to second this, Chairman. Right, OK. OK, no other indications, Chair. OK, does the planning officer wish to come back? Uh, thank you, Chair. No, no, no further comments. OK, so therefore we'll put it to the vote. We've got a proposal and a seconder. We'll then put it to the vote, please. Okay. Thank you, Chair. So we've got um, a proposal and a seconder to grant permission in accordance with the officer's recommendation. Um, and again, if I could just remind any of those members present for the whole item can vote. Um, if you could please indicate whether you're for or against the proposal. Um, Councillor Evans? Councillor for. Councillor Turner? For. Councillor Boddington? For. Councillor Harris? For. Councillor Hignett? For. Councillor Huffer? For. Councillor Motley? For. Councillor Parsons? For. Councillor Townsend? For. Councillor Tyndall? For. Councillor Woodward? For. OK, and um, that's um, unanimous, Chair. OK, that's carried. That's unanimous. Thank you very much, Committee, for that. We now go on to a list of appeals and appeal decisions, please, Richard. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, Turbant report is today. Uh, the first one, appeal dismissed, erection of two Southfield dwellings on land west of Bigwood's powerhouse, Lone Lane, Beckbury. The inspector decided it was not in filling within the village as required by paragraph 145 of the NPF in respect to green belts. And there'll be a conflict with general plan policy. Would encroach on the countryside and impact on the green belt's intended purpose and would detract from the character of the landscape. And so it did not give any weight to the Southfield argument being put forward, considering that to be very limited in this case. So there were essentially no very special circumstances to justify inappropriate development in the green belt. Next, we have a Proposal for a demolition of two agricultural buildings in the direction of three dwellings at Hunger Hill Farm, Sheriff Hales. This is a site where uh, the, there was a grant of consent for a conversion of buildings on the basis of them being done under the prior notification process, but uh, they proved not to be uh, the conversion scheme actually ended up in the buildings being demolished, so they lost that consent. They therefore made a sign application, but the inspector have made it quite clear that different set of considerations apply and the appeals is dismissed in terms of it not being a location where new housing, built housing development would be appropriate. And um, in terms of the redeveloped land, groundfield land argument, that only related to a very small portion of the site, which is a former shop and therefore did not justify the schedule of development being proposed. Third one we got to report is a appeal dismissed. This is for three dwellings at um, Horston. Uh, this is one where the inspector did consider it to be an initial plot, contrary to the officer opinion on this one, but gave considerable weight to the Horston development guideline, housing guidelines already being ex exceeded. And uh, because he considered no evidence that committed sites would not come forward, he considered that over provision could undermine housing strategy and also was mindful of the parish council and residents objections with regards to community goodwill here. So it would, um, even though he considered there no actual harm to the character of the area, he considered that num number wise, authors already had what it should have in terms of new new, new building this uh, time period. Next one is for members of every call, this one is a proposal for detached, detached running in Corfe into the rear of the Sun Inn. Again, this is one way the inspector concluded this would not be in the film in this case. It was not within the government of Lawson and uh, also gave weight to the issue of housing guidelines already being exceeded in that particular settlement. We then have Perley, no detached dwelling, appeal dismissed. Another one where the inspector accepted it was within assessment but concluded it would not be in the field. Uh, Another settlement where housing guideline had been exceeded and considered that even a single dwelling would have an, an acceptable additional impact on the sort of cumulative uh, excess that there would, would be in that village. 
and also reference again to the uh, parish and residents' objections with regard to community goodwill at the scale of development, referencing back to our development plan policies. Uh, uh, that will again, also in a sense, you consider that uh, whilst again, you didn't consider it to be discordant in character with the area, just purely in terms of delivery housing numbers, it was unacceptable. Uh, again, have a certificate of lawfulness appeal, which has been dismissed. This is a proposal where uh, an applicant was wanting a substantial leisure building within his garden area for his personal use. The inspector agreed with the council that it was went beyond what to be regarded as incidental to the enjoyment of the dwelling in terms of what it's been provided. And finally, it's an appeal that was in allowed for a residential barn conversion under the prior notification proposals. Um, this is one where officers considered that the actual criteria to be met in terms of conditions about the development not leading to any increase in size of the building would not be met. The inspector disagreed, but, in, but basically this is a decision which is in complete contradiction to another one we received quite recently elsewhere in the county. So uh, planning inspectors are being advised of this inconsistency. Um, it is one where Ironically, a revised scheme had drawing had been prepared by the agent that overcame this particular inconsistency, but that was submitted on the afternoon after the decision had been issued in the morning on, on the application. Uh, so again, not one that necessarily is going to have any significant uh, precedence in the future, but it does show that we do have to be on our toes as making sure the planning inspector for the inconsistent as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Richard. Uh, that's very good. We've had seven appeals, only one allowed, uh, and the six dismissed. So I think that's uh, good work of the planning department and the planning people on committees. Uh, does the solicitor wish to raise any comments? No. Um, no, thank you, Chair. I've had a couple of indications. Uh, Andy Boddington yeah. would like to speak briefly, he said. Yes, Andy. Yeah, Andy Boddington, please. Thank you, Chair. Just very briefly, I think we congratulate ourselves on the Corfton, the back of the Sun Inn uh, appeal and the Penley appeal too. And I just want to reflect that both those sites, I think members can recall them, that both those sites, the site visit was crucial. It was being there, seeing it, feeling it. And I look forward to a future life when we go back to visiting sites in person again, I appreciate that's not possible at the moment, but I think it was critical in our decision on those two uh, items. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yes, please. Who's next one? Um, I think that's it, Chair. Thank you. OK, right. Well, as usual, I'd like to thank the officers for all their hard work, their expertise and everything else. They um, do a fantastic job in guiding us through. I'd like to thank our solicitor for the day. And uh, I'd like to thank Tim Ward for all the hard work he's done and keeping us afloat. And the next day of the meeting, the next one will be the 17th of November at two o'clock. And thank you all very much and enjoy a lovely weekend. Thank you. Thank you, David. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you.